Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to another episode of the two Abdullahs with your two favorite naughty slaves of Allah. Today, we have a really interesting episode coming up. And as you may have noticed, this is on a new channel. So if you are new here, please do subscribe. Uh, I got hit with a bit of a unfortunate situation on the main channel. So trying to get this channel up and running. Um, it's 9 p.m. here as well in um, in Eastern Time Zone where we are both located. And uh, how is it going, Abdullah Gandal? <clears throat> Hello, everybody. Uh, thank you for having me here once again. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, going amazing. Uh, today I brought this uh, special presentation for everybody. And the whole point was uh, to have a good lighthearted laugh. And, you know, Friday night, you know, a stand-up comedy kind of lighthearted conversation, but also to bring into perspective the full intensity and magnitude of the stupidity found in the religion of Islam, especially Sunni Islam. And I mean, I kid you not, it'll be hard at times to hold our laughter, uh, but that's what we will be doing. Now, we have about 150 hadith and verses, about 160 something to be exact, but obviously we can't get through them all. There are about 100 slides. So we will try to get through as many of them as we can. And we'll periodically take calls about every five or 10 slides and then take uh, your guys' viewpoints as well. But before we get into it, I remember my friend Samir had something to say about the Paris shooting, uh, Paris attack that happened today, which was really unfortunate. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Let me just um, load that up on the, on the news article, what happened there. So um Paris attack so what happened is um can you can you say what happened and why just look it up the, oh yeah yeah so, what <laughs> yeah, so this, um, this person apparently uh attacked a history teacher uh because uh it was defending or at least lecturing about uh, freedom of speech in a, in a in a classroom in france and the attacker beheaded him at about 5 p.m they say in a suburb of Paris, he was eventually shot dead by the police, but he was yelling uh, Allahu Akbar and whatnot. And this just goes to show that why we do what we do and why we need to keep uh, criticizing this faith and normalizing dissent and eradicating this concept and idea of blasphemy. Um, it, it's very, very unfortunate what happened again. At the same time, I, I I'd like to say one thing that we cannot keep turning a blind eye towards this, saying that, oh, Islam has nothing to do with this. Islam is a religion of peace. Let's be realistic. Let's stop uh, messing around. The problem is your books. Your prophet killed blasphemers and poets. His companions followed suit. And not only that, the earliest scholars of Islam have books and books full of this nonsense. And it's like Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal, Shafi, Malik, uh, all sorts of books you'll find. And until Muslims are willing to denounce these medieval scholars and these medieval scholarship that they keep idolizing, nothing's going to change. You have to explicitly come out and say that, hey, Ibn Taymiyyah's book, The Unsheathed Sword, is absolutely bonkers. Like, we do not need this. So anyways, let's not yeah. digress too much from the topic and get back to it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Just obviously, we're not saying all Muslims believe this. And obviously, you can't just assume, I mean, support this. And obviously, you can't just assume that just because someone's Muslim, that they would support such a heinous, evil thing. The majority of Muslims do not support it because the majority of Muslims are better than the holy books and the holy books and the holy teachings. Um, obviously, many of them, unfortunately even today in this world still see them see this as something that needs to be done in order to protect the religion so that is unfortunate and like you said we don't want to you know spend too much time on that we just want to condemn this and uh and move on so to to start with the presentation and uh again for those of you who are new here please do subscribe there's a new channel we want to get up and running and um as well i have a link for a mailing list and a link to donate because we don't have any super chats today. We don't have any way of getting super chats. Um, so all of the donations, if you want to send, it'll be through PayPal. So please do send them on there. Uh, now to to begin, Circus of Islam. Why did why did you call it <laughs> Circus of Islam? What, what's the uh, what's the purpose there? Uh, so the the point of calling this is a circus is it's literally a circus. It's like a stand up comedy show when. 
Like if you're talking about flying carpets, genies teleporting, possessing people, and then talking babies, and then dead meat making dead people come back to life, all sorts of absurdities. Like like we'll see. Um, uh, well, let's get into it because uh, well, so sorry, the first slide that says floating mountains. So uh, as you can see, it says in Surah two, verse sixty three. And he took a promise from you and lifted the mountain over you. So basically, Allah was mad that these people aren't listening to him. So he scared them by just uprooting this mountain and just floating it over them, as you can see. And on the right side, we have the Sidal Jaladain uh, uh, tell us that again. We uprooted from the earth and placed above you when you refused <laughs> to accept it. <laughs> so this God is threatening people with floating mountains, which is quite ridiculous. <laughs> Oh my God! So we have zombie birds. Uh, who would have thought? So this is a very common <laughs> known story. What happens is uh, Abraham was kind of I don't know why he was not sure of Allah's power or his dominion. He says, "Oh my Lord, show me something. How you give life to the dead?" And Allah is like, "Have you not believed?" And everyone, like, of course, of course, I believe. I just want to make myself satisfied. You know, make my iman stronger. I need a sign from you, O oh Lord. So the weirdest thing happens. Allah says, take four birds and commit them to yourself. Then after slaughtering them, put on each hill a different portion of them and then call them. And then they all came flying together. So if you're on the right side, what he's saying is that he took the heads and he held the heads. And then he mixed together their flesh and feathers, then set a part of them on every hill in the land. And then he summoned them and they came to him. <laughs> so he, he called them and all the parts began to fly back together, combining until they were all. <laughs> so he was holding the heads and these this leg is coming flying and then this wing is coming flying. <laughs> oh my God. And it add, okay. they, add a, they add a lot of drama in the tafsir. Eh? They add a lot of content. Uh, Abraham yeah. took a peacock, an eagle, a raven, and a cock. So he he took four <laughs> different types of birds. I don't know how he found them. And uh, just to highlight, uh, these are on faith's common here. Most Muslims are completely unaware of what is in Islam's early source material and what the Mujahideen have written. Mujahideen have written. It's so true. Exactly. And, and the reason... I was gonna say the reason why you included tafsir is just to show that this is this is that doesn't mean this is the only interpretation, but this is like a legit Sunni interpretation. These are major scholarly works that have, you know, you know, the tafsirs, the exegesis on the Quran. So these we're not straw manning or making up the meaning. This is actually what it means. <laughs> All right, let's go to the next one. Oh, the F-16 is here, the most famous, my, my favorite plane. But uh, so we know that Allah sent an army of birds with pebbles in their mouth. And then they dropped those pebbles and they killed the whole army of elephants. Uh, now, one wonders, like, what was Allah? This is Allah's F-16 army, you know, coming in with those uh, heat seeking missiles firing at those <laughs> elephants. But what doesn't make sense is, like... It, what how did the birds coordinate how did they how did the elephants get to mecca first of all in seventh century sixth century arabia it was in 570 a.d uh we'll stop with that and move on to the next one. <laughs> oh, that's zeus right is that zeus yeah <laughs> what do we have here so in 255, Allah says, and recall when you said, oh, Moses, we will never believe you until we see Allah outright. So people object to Moses, show us Allah. So Allah was so mad at the demand of these people, he took a thunderbolt and then just threw it on them. <laughs> and then he revived them after killing them. I don't know what the point of that was. <laughs> and the same story is, is, is repeated in Surah 4, Waris 153. So the thunderbolt struck them for their wrongdoing then they took the calf for worship so allah kills them <laughs> revives them and they still don't listen they go worship the golden calf i mean <laughs> these allah people. needs to work on yeah, these people. <laughs> avengers age of ultron was really <laughs> <in their> <laughs> oh lord 
it's kind of funny, yeah. Um, and yeah. It's, it's interesting that these uh, this thunderbolt idea and you know this idea of God up there was doing all of these things. Suddenly, he stopped doing all these things, but early on, he was so involved. He was like lifting mountains and throwing thunderbolts. <laughs> You know, it's like a miracle every earth. day, you know. Mir yeah, a miracle every day, and now in like nothing for 14 centuries, man. Yeah. Ooh, is that a party and a table with Jesus and his disciples <laughs> in the corner? Oh man, what is going on here? <clears throat> so oh, another interesting Amida. story. Yeah. Yeah. So this is an interesting story uh, in Surah five, verse one fourteen and one fifteen. So here we see Jesus, the son of Mary, said. O oh Allah, our Lord, send down to us a table spread with food from heaven to be for us a festival. And then Allah actually said, yeah, indeed, I will send it down. And yada, 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 he sent it down. And when we get to the tafsir of Jalalain, we find out what it was on that table. So it says, verily, I shall send it down. But whoever of you disbelieves afterwards, after it has been sent down, I'll surely chastise him with a chastisement and he's, he's gonna punish them a lot. So the angel descended with it from heaven. On it were seven loaves and seven large fish. So they ate of it until they were full, as related by Ibn Abbas. In one other hadith, it says that it considered, uh, consisted of bread and meat. So just kind of funny that like, there's this table floating and these angels are holding and bringing it down with seven loaves of bread and seven loaves of fish. At least I'd expect Allah to give them something more sophisticated. I mean, bread and fish, like, come on, give them something else, you know, like spices, yeah. garam masala. <laughs> yeah. Allah's culinary skills are not up to par. Gordon Ramsay will be very mad. <laughs> Hold on to your snake. Okay, so Moses threw his staff and it became a serpent manifest. And it says in, in the tafsir that the male, it was, it was a male snake. I don't know why that's relevant, but apparently it was a male snake. And Philaon jumped from his throne and said, help, help, because the snake came his way. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh even more God. than that, it says it, it went to it down to swallow him. <laughs> whoa, whoa. Placing its lower jaw on the ground, its upper jaw at the top of the palace. That's a big, wow, big was it? That's a big ass snake. There, you make enough, uh, get enough leather from that snake for the whole palace. Eh? Imagine <laughs> when it sheds its skin. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh man. Should I continue? He was okay. fright. Okay. Aquaman. <laughs> what is this? What is going on? So Allah says to Moses, it's again, it's Moses again. Yeah. We inspired Moses, strike with your staff the sea, and it parted, and each portion was like a giant towering mountain. So Allah like tells Moses, hit it with the stick, and then suddenly there's these paths of like these uh, appear in the ocean, and they're as big as mountains. And it's apparently in the detail that says it's like 12 paths, but <laughs> that's not in the verse. But it's funny, like, oh, let's go forward. <laughs> is that another moses miracle yeah. damn like this guy was a full-on magician man <laughs> he's good. okay so here it says and he drew out his hand and thereupon it, it was white with radiance for the observers so what seemed to have happened is moses had a miracle where he put his hand and then i'll put it in his armpit put it like this and then <laughs> white <laughs> And it says, yeah. like, uh, in the tafsir, it gives you more detail because it wouldn't hurt. It was not because of leprosy and whatnot. But then it'd go back to his normal color. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's go. Let's go on. Oh. Zamzam for Jews. <laughs> <laughs> so this story is, oh my God, more, more, that stack, that, uh, that wand. Moses had a magic wand, eh? magic stick he hit that same stick now on a rock and 12 springs of water came out of it. just like zam -zam. just like zam -zam. yeah <clears throat> and mentioned when moses sought water this is this weird look at the details we said strike with your staff the rock the one that ran off with his rope oh my god it's the same rock that ran <laughs> off with his clothes <laughs> oh my god so Are you story. Story. whoa <laughs> yeah. whoa that's interesting <laughs> what 
what? That's connected back to the Quran. The 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 one that he hit that water came out is the same one. It was angry and came back after him. <laughs> that is hilarious. <laughs> I did not know that. Tafsil Jalalain, man, you got the gems. <laughs> Oh, I should uh, I should put the link for calls too. Um, Adam Lixter is, uh, is saying, "Why didn't Moses and Abraham perform in Las Vegas?" <laughs> they need they they weren't like Chris Angel man. Like, <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's let's move on. Oh, oh my God, what is this? UFOs? <laughs> Six hundred? What is going on? Ibn Masood informed us that the Prophet had seen Gabriel having six hundred wings. What was he standing there and counting each wing like one, two, three, four? Like, is this a euphemism for a lot of things? But I don't understand why do angels really need wings? Because the atmosphere of the earth is very thin in yeah. relative relation to the whole universe where there's no air. So, and normally, it's actually, 70, hmm? right? Normally, yeah. they, when it's a large number, it would be 70. Why 600? It's interesting, it's, it's very weird. Know. Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> Maybe, maybe the ancient Arabs had like multiple ways of saying a lot. It was either 70 or 600 or 40,000, <laughs> like the specific numbers, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, what is teleporting genies? Oh, I just said it's hilarious. So the story here happens with Solomon. So when Solomon was sitting, he want, he was told by a bird that there's this this palace and he's like i want to see that palace and i want that queen in front of me so the genie's like hey don't worry man like i'll bring that queen in front of you in a blink of an eye like this so then solomon is sitting there and the genie like goes and suddenly solomon blinks his eye and the whole throne with the queen everybody's just there to just teleport and not only can genies teleport they can make things teleport and humans teleport with them so imagine if we can find a genie that is using this quantum teleportation and he can zoom back and forth through time imagine <laughs> yeah i was thinking uh this is going to be in the future and when i you know in star trek and star you know they have the teleporters <laughs> but apparently it's in the it was in the past ancient knowledge the ancient but, the was, <laughs> but their ancient <laughs> teleporting shows up on the right side yeah. so he explains how he teleported so he looked up to the heavens, and this was done by having it travel under the earth until it sprung up below Solomon's kursi seat. <laughs> <laughs> like this tunnel system, <laughs> this quantum oh, tunnel yeah, system. Musk. The boiling machine, right? He has a boiling company. Yeah. So not only not only teleports <laughs> Star Wars, it's also Elon Musk. Uh, this man, oh my see, Islam predicted Elon Musk's uh, boiling machine, right? I mean, that's his plan to make oh. a big tunnel under the earth, right? <laughs> what was that in, in Incredibles Two? That monster. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's take okay. a call. Let's see how far it's going. Oh, there was a call. Uh, <laughs> And he disappeared. I hope he comes back. Um, just to okay. make it clear, the reason we are making fun of this is because, I mean, if we just go back to the very beginning, we just talked about how someone just murdered, um, just committed a murder in the name of Islam. I'm not saying all Muslims believe that, but definitely the, the books and the religion has a lot of bad things in it. So, you know, why don't we make fun of it? Why don't we, you know, show people? And and the combined effect of like highlighting all of these things at once is to to make people shocked and to believe and to to realize that like, whoa, I like all of these crazy things are in Islam. I mean, you know, and Abdul Gandal, what would you say while we're waiting for the call? What would you say if someone told you, well, God can do anything. God God can make genies teleport and he can make uh, Elon Musk boiling machine in the past mm -hmm. and he can make fish that like oh we didn't get to the fish yet <laughs> um, why, why do you think this is like such a big like why is this a big deal i mean god can do anything right god can so i can do anything but, hold on god can do anything but he can't come down as a man apparently that's not allowed <laughs> that well, can't he happen. did though but, uh, as per christians he did though right like half no, no, i'm saying thing. according to his song, <laughs> he, he cannot do that that's not allowed mm -hmm. for him to do that or that's not befitting him or whatever but he apparently all these other things are um, yeah so one thing I'd say is like, why does God always choose to do these weird stuff? And that too only show it to people that lived thousands of years ago in the age of ignorance and superstition with no way of validating this. Yeah. Why does he only choose those people? And isn't it kind of unfair on us? 
Also, why did he take early retirement like 14 centuries ago, man? Like if, if Muhammad's Meccan people can see the splitting of the moon and then they have something to go off on, but why wasn't it shown to us? Maybe split the moon again. Like how hard is it, Allah? But it's not the fair, point right? is that, yeah. it, and if you say God can do it, well, then every religion can justify anything and everything using that because there's no, you end up blurring the line between reality and supernatural at that point right mm -hmm. yeah. you're saying my yeah. god is true and if anything goes anything goes it's just that this god chooses the most pettiest ways to manifest himself <laughs> that is true and that that is a problem when we talk about things like noah's ark as well and when we say that well um you know god it was a miracle they, the 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 bears and the wolves didn't eat the cows and chickens and um but then if that was the case then why go through that world process anyways if everything is just going to be an appeal to a supernatural right mm -hmm. um and and there is a sort of um movement now for some people to say there's no there's no supernatural um this guy uh, i mean mufti abu Layt, i think is one of them and obviously ismailis believe that ahmadis they say there's no such there is no supernatural so all of these stories i don't know how they interpret <clears throat> them but obviously we're talking about the sunni perspective here and we're going mm -hmm. by that so one one thing is very important because now a lot of Muslims when they see this they'll be like oh but these are all metaphors these aren't literal don't worry it's no no it's okay especially the uh, more liberal and Ahmadi Muslims will say that the yeah. problem with that perspective is it's constantly rebuked directly by Allah Himself where the Meccans would make the exact same objections to Muhammad saying these are just old stories none of this actually happened in Hazayla Satirul Avalim. So Allah would say, no, they're not just old stories. They're actually <laughs> real stories yeah. and they actually happen. So you kind of end up yeah. you kind of end up in the same boat as the Meccans as soon as you kind of try to relegate uh, the stories to metaphors. And the problem is, what is the standard? Who is to decide which story is metaphor, which part is literal? A little bit of it is metaphor, a little bit is how do you know? Because at that point you're depending on sco scholars deriving these interpretations not god telling you himself right zandaf the med says a uh, good point gondol and uh one Thank more thing know. is um <clears throat> i was gonna say i'm i'm excited i'm waiting for the day where the dawah guys will start saying that the stories in the quran are not actually like there's just fables i'm just waiting for that day because i think that's the next step after the whole scientific miracles is a wash now the next mm -hmm. big thing and the, the preservation is a wash now the preservation mm -hmm. of the the next thing I'm waiting for is the stories in the Quran uh, mm -hmm. metaphors. And uh, let's see if we can uh, take a call now. Hello, Mr. Virginia. Are you here? Hello, hello. Okay, Mr. Virginia is not here. Hello, Ali. Are you here? Hello. Hello, Ali. Hello. Oh, there you are. Hi. Hello. Yes. Hi. Can you hear me? Yeah, perfectly fine, man. Can you hear? Yeah, I can hear you fine. Can you hear okay. me? Okay. Uh, uh, yes, yes. So, are you you're talking to me or Mr. Virginia? I'm talking to you, Ali. Can you can give us your question now? Oh. oh okay. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, uh, in this stream is basically, you know, we are boiling it down to uh, miracles, right? Uh, mm -hmm. We're we're basically uh, kind of. Uh, the gist of the stream is about the miracles, but the thing is, uh, people believe in uh, the truth of Islam not because of miracles, but it's because they be believe in the truth of Islam for all set of other reasons, and that's a different debate altogether. And once they come to the truth of Islam because of that, and you know, of the fact of an omnipotent God, then these things are kind of you know, an extrapolation. Uh, a secondary matter mm -hmm. and no, no one bases the religion on uh, the things that you listed today <clears throat> so yeah. i mean at the end of the day we're not getting anywhere in terms of you know uh, because abdullah samir mentioned that you know why not uh, make fun of the religion because of you know such and such teachings then i mean you know uh, no, no one's stopping but at the end of the day there are people who uh, who believe in it and base their belief in it on uh, you know on entirely different set of things all, all together and then go ahead 
Okay, so uh, one thing I would say is uh, you made a point about epistemology, right? So if you say that, hey, I believe that the Quran is Allah's word, so from that point on, everything the Quran says is going to be right. And that's a problem because you are you have to judge a book. Uh, so in academia, there's something called we don't judge uh, something by its internal uh, mechanisms and beliefs all the time. You, you have to put it something outside to falsify, right? If you keep, if sorry, I'm hearing a lot of chatter in the background. Um, <clears throat> if you keep uh, going with the idea that if God can do this, then He can do everything. Then, th like I said earlier, there's no distinction between reality and supernatural, and you're trying to make your religion and the stories in your book sound more unfalsifiable. And like, like I understand what you're trying to say that you're saying that the stories are unfalsifiable in a sense, but people don't care about their absurdity. They just believe in it regardless, and uh, they have belief oh, in some prior to the stories, right? Uh, yes, yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah. You can complete your point. Yeah, that, that's my point. But it's the point of epistemology, right? Like you're saying, like, oh, I believe in Allah, therefore everything the Quran says is true. But what I'm trying to say uh, is when the Quran makes claims about the physical world and how these miracles happen, then these miracles leave or should have some reminiscence or some form of falsifiability to them because then you don't really have anything because you're just creating an unfalsifiable loop. You understand what I mean? Yeah, uh, yes, yes. I mean, um, I do. And uh, from your uh, the, the the way you see it, you you may be right, and I'm I'm not. You know, I'm I'm acknowledging that. But what I'm saying is, when you bring in uh, the methodological naturalism uh, and keep mm -hmm. that in mind as part of the philosophy of science, then mm -hmm. one of the main axioms of it is that you have to leave supernatural, like you know, out of it. These are some things that mm -hmm. are not in the same realm. Mm -hmm. And uh, <clears throat> methodological naturalism actually entails that these things are not, uh, you know, we, we don't wear the lens of science when we look at these things at all. So this whole stream in in that sense would be, you know, out of the window. I mean, I'm, I'm not saying that uh, I'm c demanding that you stop do that. You, you can, and that's your freedom of speech. But at the end of the day, uh, when you keep methodological naturalism in mind, then, uh, you know, this is just a uh, criticism for the sake of criticism and making fun for the sake of making fun. And we are not at the end of the day uh, getting anywhere, anywhere with that. I, I would I will really, really disagree with that because like I said, we are about into how many slides are we in like 10? We have about a hundred slides. And what I'm trying to showcase is that, like I keep saying, Yes, certain amount of absurdity, people, Muslims will be like, yeah, okay, okay, okay. But buddy, like you're going to see an amount of absurdity and stupidity that is, 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 is at conflict with reason on every imaginable level, okay? Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's what I'm trying to say. Is, and it's, yeah. This is not generic BS. What I'm trying to say is that the, the absurdity that I've compiled in, a, in one format when you put it together and you view it holistically, you realize, oh boy, okay? And like I said, I understand your point and I totally know the point about epistemology, but the point then again happens and if you can say, then everybody can say and then everybody's religion is okay, right? And I also understand your about, point about methodolo uh, methodological naturalism as well. We are presupposing that, of course, but that is our, that is the best presupposition we can have based on the evidence. But despite yeah. that, just watch the presentation and see how bad it gets. Uh, uh, just uh, on a side note, I uh, just want to ask, are you Muslim or uh, a, a non-believer? Uh, I, I am a Muslim. Okay. So uh, we might take you back later on, and I'll ask you a few questions about some of the things that we will come across, okay? Because some of them will be oh. so outright, uh, like, for example, outright conflict with science that it's just really hard to make sense of them, okay? But anyways, I'll get back to you. Uh, Do keep the link and join us later on. I'd like to talk to you later, okay? Okay. Uh, um, yeah. Uh, yeah I, 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 I do. I, I'm sorry. I do apologize in in advance if I'm not uh, there for the full stream. I've just got some uh, things to do. No problem. But anyway, I mean, you know, <laughs> still uh, nice talking to you and uh, you guys. No, no, have totally. A good night. <clears throat> thank, 
Thank you, Ali. So, Thank you. Uh, I, I appreciate know... your nice cordial exchange as well. It's nice talking to you. Thank you. Thanks. I don't oh, know what no happened problem, to guys. my computer. Yep. Bye. I don't know what happened to my computer, why it is clashed now. It's clashed twice, so I apologize for that. If it oh. happens again, yeah, blue screen. I, I think I, I can share the thing too then. Oh, I have it. I have the slide now. Okay. Uh, but but just in case, yeah, you can you can share. You should be able to, I think. Okay. Um, hopefully, it won't happen let's, again. And let's just go to add, slides. you want to do a couple slides before the next call? Okay. Just to yeah. add to what you were saying, um, it is you know, th th which is what I was asking you just before he, this call that came and asked basically the same mm -hmm. thing. Um, and it's it is one of the one of it is one argument. It's true that this is one way of of presenting this information, and it has its flaws too. Right? It has its flaws that. If you can always go back and say, well, 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 it's possible, well, it's possible. But the thing is, what we're trying to show is that any reasonable mind would not accept any of these things except for the fact that it's part of Islam. If I came and told you, like, you've, you've come up with these stories of Zinu, the great prophet Zinu, and he did this and that, and everyone's like, what kind of crazy cult is this? And then you're like, oh, sorry, that wasn't Zinu, that was Allah. And everyone's like, Exactly. Like that's, well, that's, the point. that's the point. We're trying to, you mm -hmm. know, we're trying to show that the, the the amount of craziness here that people will accept only because it's from the religion, only because like it doesn't otherwise wouldn't make any sense. So apologize oh, to. The I've party. I've done this exact experiment with my own family. A lot of Muslims in, in a family gathering. I said, "Hey, I heard this story about the shooting stars chasing genies." <laughs> All of yeah. them were laughing their ass off. No, 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 Jojo, Muslims are laughing at the idea that this could possibly be true. In fact, some Muslims, some guys, no, 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 of course not, it's meteors. But then I'm like, <laughs> but buddy, it's in the Quran, and they're like, no way, no way. And then I showed it to them three times. <laughs> okay. All right, slides? Let's go. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. Oh, song button. There All is. right. Oh. Are we on this one? Uh, no, we did this one. Yeah, we did. Oh, black dogs are Satan. What? Okay, so this is well, this is weird. So, Prophet Muhammad is telling you something that there is <clears throat> that three things can cut off your prayer, uh, sever your prayer, is if a donkey passes in front of you, a black dog, and a woman. So Allah is comparing women in the same category as black dogs and donkeys. Uh, the Prophet. And then he says to make sure to kill the black dog because the black dog is the devil. And there's a lot more hadith to it, but we'll just stick to this one. And you will see this recurring theme, this sinophobia occur. Not only did Muhammad hate black dogs, but we'll see why he hated black dogs because his best imaginary friend hated black dogs. <laughs> so there's a no, whole backdrop to it. Isn't it, isn't it also like a conflict? I'm trying to find it, but I don't have it. But I remember Aisha was angry about this hadith. And yeah, she was and like, she oh, said, no, no. yeah, go ahead. She said, I was praying. He was praying at night and I was sitting there and it, I was in front of him. I didn't cut off the prayer or something. Yeah, uh, she didn't yeah. Like hadith, apparently. <laughs> what was funny She's was like, like Aisha wasn't even there when Muhammad and, didn't it? Didn't she say you're comparing us to donkeys and dogs? Exactly. She literally said that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't have the reference. I couldn't find it right now, but mm. talking spy oh. birds. Talking spy birds. Oh, no, no, no. But the oh, hoopoe. Oh. <laughs> Stayed not long. It says, I've encompassed in knowledge that which you have not encompassed. I have come to you from Shiva with certain news. Ooh, do tell us, O oh Hupo. Indeed, I found a woman ruling them, and she's been given all things, and she has a great throne. I don't know what this obsession is with the throne. <laughs> it's like, what the hell? It's like, why are you so worried about this? Yeah. <clears throat> But hey, women, women queens, remember that this is before Islam. The Quran is testifying that women were queens before Islam, more rights in prehistoric, pre-Islamic eras. There you go. And Muhammad said, and Muhammad reduced women to say that yeah. any woman who becomes leader of a nation will be cursed. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Talk about losing rights, eh? Talk about <laughs> Oh boy, this one's funny where I, I just don't get it. The story of Solomon is so mind-bogglingly clearly a fable. Like it's just yeah. beyond words. The guy yeah. talks to birds, then he talks to genies, then he has teleporting genies, and genies are making him wells and all sorts of buildings, and they're bringing the Queen of Sheba to him. Bird is going spying for him, then he's hearing 
ants getting scared of his army being crushed. <laughs> like, what is left? <laughs> oh, wait, there is something more. But yeah, this story is weird. We're like, Solomon is running two words, the valley of the ants, and he hears the ants speak, oh, ants, enter dwellings, you'll be crushed by Solomon's. And Solomon's hear that and he laughs. <laughs> like, yeah. what? <laughs> and that, it's like, how does Solomon interpret the vibrations on the top of the things that vibrate? It doesn't, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Right? And this is a pattern you'll see. <laughs> yeah. Talking Sorry. cows. <laughs> Should I go ahead? Yeah. So it's hard to yeah, know any then. Yeah. <laughs> so... What's funny is there's talking cows and talking wolves after talking birds wasn't enough. After talking. So we have uh, a hadith where it says, while a man was driving a cow, he suddenly rode over it and beat it. So he's like, hey, you bad cow. Slap, slap. <laughs> the cow said, the cow started talking. We have not been created for this, but we have been created for slapping. <laughs> you almost bad. <laughs> <laughs> And that the people said, astonishingly, <laughs> glorified be Allah, cow speaks. <laughs> Even the people are like, what is, Even Muhammad can speak crazy. Like, this doesn't make sense, dude. The companions the are like, said, what's going on? Like, this doesn't make any sense. <laughs> no, then Muhammad ups it up and all. She's like, oh, I believe this. And Abu Bakr and Omar believe it too. Although neither of them was present there. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it's weird. <laughs> it doesn't stop. Then suddenly, while a person was amongst his sheep, a wolf attacked and took one of the sheep. The man chased the wolf till he saved it from the wolf. Whereupon the wolf started speaking, You have saved it from me, but who will guard it on the day of the wild beast where there'll be no shepherd to guard them except me? Giving dawah. The wolf is giving dawah, man. <laughs> you guys have to worship Allah because you have judgment and my who is gonna guide you when there's no guardian? <laughs> Wolf Dawa. There's 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 a uh, in uh, what is it like Jin Dawa? The jinns give Dawa, the, the wolf gives Dawa, the trees give Dawa. It's like what is this? And then the wolf speaks, and even people are like Subhanallah, how does the wolf speak? <laughs> and then the Prophet says again, I believe this, but Abu Bakr and Omar too, and they weren't even there. <laughs> <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> oh my God. You know, I took a class uh, called um, <laughs> Prophetic Dawah, and it's like you could make a whole class on this. Like <laughs> when someone doesn't believe Wait, it, can I... I, I believe it, and even this guy believes that he wasn't even there. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. <clears throat> this is blind right. faith in action. Yeah, let's go next slide. Oh boy. <laughs> if, <laughs> as if talking talking animals weren't enough. You have stones. <laughs> this is even before Muhammad became a prophet. So he'll be walking by in the valleys of Mecca and then suddenly you're like, Hey Muhammad, what's up? Salam alaikum, bro. And Muhammad's like, hey Stone, what's up, man? <laughs> it's, it's just like he recognizes the stone, like the stone is a specific stone too. <laughs> you should have taken it home, man. It's like a little pet, right? <laughs> <laughs> you actually have pet stones, people do. <laughs> Wait, actually, I have a stone if I can find it. It's a fried rock. i <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> does, does it talk though? <laughs> no, no, it's just like a rock that has a rainbow painted on it. <laughs> okay. Haram, haram. Stuff rainbow, up. rainbow is LGBT. <clears throat> Haram. <laughs> but Allah made the rainbow in the nature. I'm just saying. <laughs> All right, let's go. Okay, um, I'm gonna post the link again. Uh, when when yeah, should we take uh, uh, when should we take the next caller? We should take uh, one or two more slides till the talking section is done. <laughs> okay, I can't see the slide numbers here. Okay, so let's okay. yeah, let's finish the talking section. Let me know when you get to callers then. Okay. I, I don't know the slide on. <laughs> talking tree plays hide and seek with genies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Allah, what is this? What is <laughs> nice in the Asukadi voice? What is all this going on? <laughs> <laughs> so, who informed the Prophet about the jinns at the night when they heard the Quran? He said, your father, Abdullah, informed me that a tree informs the Prophet of Allah. <laughs> Subhanallah. It's, 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 it's mind-boggling that this guy is talking to genies. And not only that, the genies are, he's not sure if they're there. So the tree is telling him at the same time, hey, Muhammad, there's a genie right there. 
And now, isn't it funny? It's very similar to the day of judgment when the trees and the stones will yell, hey, there's a Jew hiding behind me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, what is this thing? This guy's talking to genies and trees at the same time. SubhanAllah, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's weird, eh? Like, he, it's not like, it's like the, the tree told him, the talking tree told him about the magical fairies. <laughs> like, like really. When you put it like that. <laughs> <laughs> Very logical religion. Most, you know, the funny thing uh, is, I used to believe this was the most logical religion. I mean, everybody believes that. That's another, that's another myth we have to smash that we're going to smash right now. Most oh, yeah. rational religion, my ass. This is oh. like the bunking of the most rational religion right here. Hmm. Right? Like you this will... is not none of this is rational. <laughs> and we are only on slide uh what 18? Okay. We better keep oh. going, right? <laughs> oh oh there's talking food now and moist fingers. Okay, that sounds weird. <laughs> hmm. Let's That's see what good. is this. Yeah. We used to eat food with the messenger of Allah and we would hear the food tasbih. So you oh. take a food bite and you're like, subhanAllah, the food says subhanAllah, Allah Akbar, alhamdulillah, with every bite. So like, it's, it's, it doesn't end. The absurdity just, like, okay, I get it, you like the talking birds. Okay, I get it, you like the talking cows and wolves. Okay, now food? Okay, trees? <laughs> and then you know, it's funny. Yeah, go ahead. Like, it doesn't stop. I <laughs> said the prophet was brought a container. So he's like, Oh, let's put my hand in the water. <laughs> and then <laughs> it came out and everybody had enough water. One container fed the whole tribe. So there was this meme, the examinate, but they had like these small like water taps on the fingers. <laughs> <of them all. laughs> and you know, we gotta we gotta make make this clear that this is not just I mean, this is the Quran too and the hadith combined, both have the same absurdity. I mean, some of the absurdity in the in the hadith is like next level, but it's in the Quran too. Like we're quoting Quran, not just hadith. It's all over the place, right? Um, you, I love this. Hmm? So go ahead. I love this comment. A tree is in the Isnad. <laughs> <laughs> Narrated from my Abdullah that the tree told him <laughs> that the prophet told him that there was gins. <laughs> Oh man! Okay, that that's funny. That is very funny. Hadith <laughs> <laughs> signs. Oh, what? Tree. oh, is it <laughs> trees and gins can be can be narrators too? <laughs> oh boy, it's like un, it's like uh, an Omar on on Shadr on Jinn. Reading these now, Muhammad heard from the tree who heard from genie who heard from the shaitan. Oh boy. <laughs> but the jinn got stoned by the shooting star, so he didn't get the message. <laughs> oh boy, man, this is hilarious. Like, how do you. Let's take a call before we have an aneurysm. <laughs> I, I... <laughs> okay, I'm going to take the calls in order. Uh, Magnus Travel, hello. Hello, how are you? How are you doing, man? Good, good, thank you. Yeah, so uh, I was uh, going through, like, um, uh, with my one relative in uh, Oklahoma. He's a doctor, like, uh, like around 50 years old. Around and uh, I was going through with him, uh, and uh, everything he uh, all the time he comes on the health thing uh, and afterlife health thing. And uh, is uh, I couldn't find like some something short so I can send him uh, because uh, on the hell, uh, I don't know uh, what, what's the history and like that. So the, uh, all the time he's coming on, whatever I send him, he's coming on uh, like afterlife and health. That's all. He's not moving anywhere. So I we did a whole episode on hell and heaven, actually. Two episodes, one dedicated yeah, yeah. to each. Yeah, yeah. I saw the last yesterday think, one. I think what, what he's saying, uh, Gondal, is that no matter what he says, this guy's saying, you know, but what about hell? The thing is, brother, I, you can't convince everybody. I'm just like, just frankly speaking, there's just going to be people that don't want to listen. If you're telling this guy stuff and he doesn't want to know, he he may just react in a way that just, you know, like, I'm not interested. So we're only here to help the people that want to be helped. You know, like, we're, we're doing this work for 
for the sake of uh, the be a better world, not the sake of Allah, but the sake of a better world. And you, we can't help everybody. We can only help people that want to be helped at the end of the day. So, you know, like, maybe he doesn't want to know. I, if he does, then if he wants to know, I mean, hell is made up. That's not really a, like a response. Yeah. Oh, look at these problems with the Quran. Oh, but hell. That's not, that's yeah. not even, a, that's not an argument, right? So he, he comes all the time, <laughs> you know, I'm uh, I'm uh, worried about the, I'm not worried about the, like this life is only like 70 years old, uh, you can live uh, 70, 80 years old, but uh, I'm worried about the afterlife. So I'm saying where's the afterlife, is there's no evidence and everything I'm telling you, I'm telling, and uh, he is just coming again and again on that thing. And plus yeah. he was going, coming on the morale, so I sent him the uh, morale thing and I said, what about the slavery, who gave it? Uh, I, uh, I told him like uh, the, the religion hijacked the morality and uh, but, uh, with the morality, we have all the morality nowadays, uh, <coughs> if you, uh, read the Charter of Human Rights, the uh, UN Charter of Human Rights, there's a 30 clause and that's all, uh, you can write it in, in two pages. So why why you need uh, 1000 pages uh, of nothing, you know? Yeah. Yeah. We are much better than like uh, it's never been anything uh, be written uh, like that two pages uh, before that uh, uh, nothing can compare that thing yeah i mean definitely what we have today in terms of human rights is far better than any holy book from the past for sure i agree with you. yeah and it's only two two pages 30 30 you know 30 verses you can say it's only 30 mm -hmm. verses or you can put in two you pages know? and uh, yeah we should I, turn the Charter of Human Rights into a surah like it in Arabic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that would be great. That's that would be idea. very, very good. Yeah, that's a very yeah. good idea. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll work on it. <laughs> yeah, you'll start work on that. That would be a great thing, you know. Okay, thank you so much for okay, your thank call. You, thank you so much. Have a nice thank time. You. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. All right, uh, Ray, I can't add you. You don't have any devices connected. Raphael, hello. Hello. Hello, guys. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. So I wanted to bring a very ridiculous hadith up uh, about breastfeeding. Uh, oh, yeah, I, I think we all, have it. Know, know it. <laughs> I think we have we it. We have it later. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, guys, guys, but the interesting thing about this is uh, most uh, Muslim apologetic uh, apologists, uh, especially the Sunni ones, uh, because of uh, it's a Sunni hadith, right? and uh, mm -hmm. in uh, Sahih Bukhari, I think. And uh, they always say that, uh, so the hadith is about that the Prophet orders a woman to breastfeed an adult, basically, who already had a beard. So that, I think that uh, she can, she can, he can go uh, in his house, in and out. So he will be her uh, makram. It's oh, this there. is about Abu Hudayfa, right? Yeah, okay. yeah, exactly. Abu Hudayfa, mm -hmm. his wife. Uh, it's mm -hmm. about his wife. So the Prophet ordered his wife to breastfeed uh, an adult called Salim so that he can go, so that Salim can go in and out of her uh, house. Excuse my English, I'm not sorry, it's not my native language, but. Um, no problem. Yeah. And yes, this this is a common um, hadith used uh, by um, um, I guess Christian apologists bring it up a lot. And, and, uh, and Shia, Shias also. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say I I I um, Sunnis don't, as far as I know, don't actually do that. Like You're I haven't heard it anymore. <laughs> yeah, I don't like Angela. <laughs> like, I, I, I wish I was a Muslim in the early days of Islam. It'd be halal titties. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thanks. But, thanks uh, for your call. Uh, Is there anything else you want to add? But uh, because we do have a lot more slides actually on funny, hilarious oh, things. Yeah. Sorry, but I just wanted to add that most of the Muslim apolog apologists say that. She didn't uh, directly breast breastfeed him. You put in the cup. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But the funny <laughs> thing is, the Salafi scholars like uh, Sheikh Al Albani and uh, Sheikh Ishaq Al Hawaini, I don't know if you heard about him. Uh, those two guys said in an audio that it was directly. 
that it was directly and that oh. there is nothing sexual about breasting or a woman showing her nipple and stuff like that you really what? should uh, uh -huh. check it out it's a uh, it's on youtube it's a uh, that's yeah, very weird about... because that goes against the idea of uh, modesty. Right? Guys, but then guys, again, the guys, slaves... you won't believe no that shirt. if you hear that, you won't believe that. Mm. Sheikh Al Hawaini, he's from Egypt. He says that she breasted him directly, and all the guys who say no, it's not directly, they lie. They feel just ashamed. Like this guy, this, yeah. uh, this Sheikh is straightforward. Like well... uh, Sheikh Al Albani also. So you should definitely check this out. There is another variation. Well, uh, in the future, what ended up happening was Aisha took this as a precedent that she could breastfeed anybody, but yeah, she didn't yeah, have exactly. milk of her own, so she sent it yeah, to her yeah. sisters. <laughs> it's so, it's so ridiculous. He, and the 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 Shias they they say she did that so that a strange man can go in and out, uh, mm -hmm. like in in her house after the Prophet's death. So that she might did something uh <laughs> i don't know <laughs> i mean she was young so i wouldn't put it past her and she's already been in a scandal <laughs> yeah uh. yeah but all right thanks for your comment yeah okay thank you thank you so much thank you so much for calling bye guys thank you <clears throat> bye i'm just um just looking it up on islam qa it does say that um al qutubi and a number of other scholars understood this verse um can only occur well, the 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 mahram relationship that is the same as the mahram relationship to blood ties can only occur within the first two years because according to the quran um you can only you can only bless feed in the first two years and it says this is the view of zuhri qatada ashabi sufyan atawri al wazai al shafi ahmed ishaq abu yusuf muhammad mm -hmm. abu so just to not straw man islam because I, I don't like to misrepresent what muslims actually mm -hmm. believe this is a very very fringe opinion of this e egyptian sheikh that you mentioned because i just i just looked it up just to be on the safe side because i know as a muslim i've never ever like heard of this happening i i know the hadith is there but people have to realize that the hadith being there doesn't always translate into an actual ruling right because there's, it can be abrogated or it could be like whatever there's so many ways right but just to mm -hmm. just to be fair <laughs> yeah, this is not. It was yeah. ten sucklings, then it became five <laughs> sucklings. Yeah. So imagine you have to like. So if he's, oh my god, if just to think about it, if he's saying that it has to be literal sucklings, so you have to go to the lady ten times to suck her nipples to get the milk. And even if it's not literal suckling, even if yeah. it's like you put in a cup, oh, it yeah, is yeah. absurd. You go to the lady ten times to drink her milk, so she like, what are you trying to do? That's weird. <laughs> yeah. I want to share the slides again. Um, okay. Boop. Okay. Oh yeah, we did this. So one. We went through the moist fingers. Oh, oh man, this magic spit, magic spit water trick. Ooh. So we were in the company of uh, the Prophet, and the number was through there was about fourteen hundred people with Muhammad, and they camped at a well, and it was dry. So they informed Allah's messenger, of course, and he magically comes in. He got like two two in the well, and. Boop, there's and he leaves it for, and then it fills up with the water and not only did the people drink their writing animals all finished it <clears throat> so muhammad spat in a well and about 1400 humans so and about and all of their animals drank it <laughs> like, this yeah. is some weird magic spit holy spittle the holy divine yeah. spittle Disgusting. muhammad spit makes an appearance over and over <laughs> and over again you will see <laughs> Angel army. It's kind of like the. <laughs> so here is talking about one instant where it says, uh, We will reinforce you with 3,000 angels. But we instead did it with 5,000. And then they had these markings of distinction on them. So I can imagine that the Muslims are fighting in, in, in the war. And then these angels come wearing, I don't know, these these bandanas or something with color coded or like these armbands <laughs> so they know who's who <laughs> so the angels don't confuse and kill the muslim i don't know what the point was that or the muslims know uh, <laughs> that's true the muslims don't even know where these people are right <laughs> yeah. yeah we're just fighting and these like thousands of angels are coming out right yeah. <laughs> but it's it's just bizarre just seeing this 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 whole thing and the funny thing is like angels came and helped and bother when the muslims won but when they lost allah was not sending the angels <laughs> although he had promised he would right so <laughs> and so uh, funny. 
And um, hold on a second. Here's another funny thing. It's a specific number, 3,000 and 5,000. Like, why? Why? <laughs> what does it matter? I, you can send five. That would be enough. You can send one Gabriel who covers the whole you horizon with 600 one, wings. <laughs> like, 5,000 angels? Like, what kind of stupid angels are these? <laughs> <laughs> not or a like what, a thousand Qureshis, you need five thousand. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is so ridiculous. Right? Anyway, <laughs> fine. Allah needs to work on his U.S. military can train the angels. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what is this progeny of Satan? So here it says, we said to the angels, prostrate to Adam, and they prostrated, except for Iblis. He was at the jinn. So what they're telling him, and, and then you'll take from him and his descendants as allies. So apparently. Satan has a whole lineage, a whole army. Like, like there's a lot of angels. There's a lot of Satan. The big Satan is is she is his chief of army staff, his chief of family affairs, and then there's his whole little army. So that's interesting that there's a whole army of Satan's. Man, there's an army of genies. So there's wait, how how many mythical creatures have we gone in so far? So we have genies existing with their whole absurd. They can have sex with humans and all possess humans, shape shift, teleport. Then there's these angels that have wings and they fly around with six hundred wings, carrying messages from God, cutting up people's chest to clean their hearts out. And now we have Satan, and then angels are fighting in the battles, like. <clears throat> I could actually write a whole fantasy novel out of this, honestly. It sounds like Lord of the Rings. Yeah, it does sound exactly. like Lord of the Rings. It's like Warcraft or something, seriously. <laughs> it's like that movie, seriously. This oh, one man, was hilarious. I love how the book. I like you, Like, he had a throne on the water. I mean, if it's on the water, it's pretty much a boat, right? <laughs> so Allah is like riding on a boat. And it's funny is, it was the, the throne was floating upon the water before Allah had created the universe. So this is before the Big Bang. Somehow H2O is existing and Allah's what's the point? The point is that this is a again a, a clear borrowing from the water creation myths that we see in other mythologies in the past. Now what's funny is it gets worse on the hadith you read is uh, I said, oh, messenger of Allah, where was our Lord before he created his creation? So the messenger said, he was above the clouds, below which was air, and above which was air and water. Then he created his throne above the waters. <laughs> Something like celestial ocean floating and Allah just writing it. <laughs> like, come on. Yeah, and and just to be fair, this is a Hassan Hadith, but this is the 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 um, the mythology of the world that they believed in. They used to believe there was an ocean in the sky. I mean, it makes sense. Where does rain come from? It must be an ocean in the sky, right? There's an ocean <laughs> below us. There's an ocean above us, and we see the same thing in the Bible. The firmament was open, and the psh, water came out. And I mean, it's it's very um, seventh century for for sure, right? Um, the ocean in the sky. So hold on a second. Oh yeah. Can't Allah do a Thanos snap? <laughs> um, <laughs> now wa watch what happens next. You thought you thought only Allah has a boat. You, so, you you thought only Allah has a boat. Go next. <laughs> Allah, there's another comment. So, so Adam was on. So Allah was on cloud nine. <laughs> uh, oh, Satan oh. has a boat too. Oh my God. It's, Satan's like you. Allah have a boat. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get myself big boat, big Titanic. <laughs> <laughs> so look at this hilarious. This is insane, Muslim. Iblis places his throne upon the water. He then sends detachments. So, it, <laughs> so this is the HQ, the 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 Satan HQ on the water island. Or something. <laughs> yeah, and you know, if people are wondering, kind of wondering why, like you know, I was confused about this too. A lot of a lot of us modern people, modern Muslims, were confused about this whole water thing. Like, why would there be water? Because we know the world it wasn't water before, right? Um, and what what we what I finally understood is when I was watching Crash Crash Course Mythology, is that a lot of ancient peoples have these myths of coming from water. Because when you look at the ocean, all you see is water and it goes on forever and ever. It seems to be going on forever and ever. And on top of it, 
they didn't know the earth was round and a globe. So when they see the water and they see that the water has been there and they haven't been there for a long time, but the water has always been there, the whole life. This just sort of makes them feel like, you know, this is maybe that's what it was. It was always water. And that's why we have Allah's throne was on water. And, and you know, in, in other creation myths, it, again, the earth came out of water. So there's a lot of things like that, that um, because of the way that the ancients used to look at the world. Mm hmm and that's and you can see like it's repeated over and over again and what's funny here is it's almost like you know they have these parallels like allah does something satan's gonna be the same thing but counteract it and try to imitate allah and so he has yeah <laughs> and, and it doesn't it doesn't like the the implication of it being a throne means it can't move so it's like a standing boat literally it's like a it's like a houseboat. It's not a boat that. <laughs> well, I don't know if he has like engines or jet engines in the <laughs> back or something. <laughs> it's oh. eight, eight angels, eh? The eight. Oh, it's like yeah. eight angels. It's right here. It's the next slide. All right, perfect. This one is very funny because it doesn't matter if it's eight angels or ten angels or five angels. Allah doesn't even need angels. He's all powerful. He can float by himself. <laughs> you, would think, so, you would think it would be four. Yeah, it's like, the four corners, but Allah yeah. is an octagon, okay? Octagon <laughs> throw. <laughs> oh, my. Oh, your, your camera cut. Yeah, I know. Okay. I'm over here, I think. Um, <laughs> so one of the things about this, this uh, verse is, if you read the Arabic, the word eight is at the end. Uh, the word thamaniya, is what means eight. Now, this is solely and solely put there to hold the rhyme. Because if you notice the verses before and after, it's the rhyme that's maintained because of the word Samani. It could be 12 angels, 10 angels. Theologically, it's no, no change, no difference. You can clearly see why this was added here. And you can see that in the Tafsir of Jalalain, it says, Sorry, I missed angels, that. Why was, it, why was it added? I didn't get that. So if you were to read the ayat before and after, yep. or the whole theme of the rhyme of the surah, oh. the word samania, the word eight, is just there to hold the rhyme. Because oh. theologically, eight has no importance. It could oh, be seven. Oh my. Are you serious? Yeah. If you open, oh. the, show it to the people, surah 69. Let's just look at the verses. So we'll see. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Just those two, three points. 69, 17? Yeah, on seventeen, right? So yeah, as you can see, like we'll we'll start from Yoma is you Vaka atil Vaqiya. Yeah. One shakka the sama of Fahiya Yoma is in Wahiya. Yeah. Well, Malak wala arda hiya murab of Yoma is in Samania. So that Samania, Wahiya, Wakiya, Khafiya. The next one mm -hmm. is Khafiya. all rhyme, and Samania is very important yeah. to hold the rhyme. Kitabia. Yeah. Kisabia. So Ra that's one thing I noticed too that the it could be seven. Radia, Alia. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Amazing. This is a, wow. That's a fantastic point. I didn't even know that. That's really interesting. Hi. Right, should we take more callers? Now's a good time. Let's. Yeah. Let's take a few callers. Hey Ray. I know you've been trying to get on for a bit. How's it going? Hello. Yo, bro. What's up? What's up, what's man? Up, How's man? going? I'm good. Yeah, what's doing, on your bro, mind? What about you? Good. Good. Thanks. Yeah, so firstly, um, I mean, I'm not really going to talk about the Hadith, but just the one about the dogs and the uh, women and all that. I mean, if you go to uh, Bukhari, Volume 1, Book 9, 490, I mean, it, it kind of show, it shows that it wasn't the Prophet saying that. So, say that again. Okay, well, say I'll, that I'll again. Type it, I'll type it. Okay. Uh, the, so the one about, the, about the cutting of the dog is it's actually narrated by a few yeah, different the dog, sources. Which one? Oh, you're talking about the prayer. Oh, why yeah, yeah. yeah. So <clears throat> I'll explain it's got a few narrations to it. So it's not just one off. It's actually often reported by different Sahabis. And then there's a counter report by Aisha claiming that, no, the Sahabis all collectively misheard them, even though she wasn't even there when this happened. And then there's like, the back and forth that I was standing in front of the prophet and I and he was praying and I just pulled my legs and my, his prayer continued his prayer wasn't uh, invalidated and then there's another opinion where it's just for women who are not your mahram can do the validation right so there's yeah I have a, but yeah 
<laughs> Ray, I do have a reference, another reference for you. Mm -hmm. That that is a Sahih reference in uh, Jamia Tirmidhi that says it was directly from the Prophet. It says, I was one of those who held the branches. So he was shading the Prophet um, while he was doing the khutbah. So I guess they didn't have air conditioning back then. And he said, if I were not, what? If I if it were not that dogs were a nation, then I would order that they would be killed. So kill everyone among them that is black. And then saying, if you keep a dog, not they, I mean, he is saying, if you keep a dog. So like uh, Gondal was saying, there's more than one hadith on this. So, but yeah, maybe mm -hmm. maybe for that specific point with, about the... Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, like, we can go back and forth on that. I don't think in that case we'd make much progress, but... Okay, yeah, I, I, I found a about. bunch, actually. Uh, yeah, so I can't uh, look what, that's yeah, a hadith, I don't think. what was your point, though? Your point was it's not a good hadith? No, I was, I was saying that, um, what's it called? Uh, I was just pointing out this hadith, and then there's a lot of different... Uh, uh, different hadith saying yeah. that, and yeah. So, I mean, you, yeah, you guys like, have I'm, better point. So, I was just pointing out this one. But anyway, I, I actually, was yeah, saying, just to I be fair. To say, yeah. Oh, How about this one? Go. That's pretty clear, say, yeah. life for profit. <clears throat> but then I have the counter for it too, where in Sahih oh, Bukhari it says, yeah. Uh, well, I'll just read it out. Do you make us women equal to dogs? Aisha said that oh. dogs and donkeys. <laughs> And then she says, I used to lie in my bed and the prophet would come and pray facing in the middle of the bed. And I didn't stand in front of him. I used to slip away slowly, but his prayer wasn't severed. So no, oh, yeah, this, that's the one I was, this is, that's the, exactly. what's it called? That's what I was quoting. Yeah. It's in, in this hadith, it says that <laughs> they said to Aisha um, that these three things invalidate the prayer. And then yeah. uh, Aisha says to them, do you think this are do you think uh we're donkeys or something like that that's mm -hmm. essentially what you said to them as a reply yeah. to them so yeah, so what i was trying to say was that when muhammad made those statements that this cut off by a dog woman and donkey he said that when aisha was not there but a lot of multiple different male sahaba heard that now they brought it to aisha and aisha objected with her own reasoning later on it doesn't mean that Muhammad didn't say it. It's just that she says, no, in her opinion, that's that. And you see this trend a lot where you have these Abu Huraira group and clan with one type of hadith and then Aisha clan is with another. And it goes back down to like the history of hadith. And there's a lot of concoctions. And yeah. one of the reasons that I feel like of why Aisha has narrated so many hadith despite being so young is because they can just attribute stuff to her, put her in her mouth and say she said it. There's a very big chance of happening, right? I was going to so, say that... Yep. Sorry, go ahead, finish. And then I'll talk. Uh, that was my point. So there's a lot of back and forth. And you can then, the point then goes back to the hadiths itself. And I can show you numerous Sahih hadiths within Bukhari that contradict Muslim. Like, do you know which eye the Cyclops or Dajjal is blind in? Because one hadith in Bukhari says right and the other in Muslim says left. So you mm -hmm. don't know, but it definitely says he's blind in one eye. Mm -hmm. So there yeah. are these kind of contradictions everywhere. But then again, like this, the... The hadith no, no, I agree with you. I agree with you, yeah. but I feel I think for this one, it's it's pretty much conjecture, you know. I was gonna yeah, say, yeah, yeah. um, with the hadith, you know, maybe it's possible that out of those three things, maybe he didn't say women. Maybe he said dogs and donkeys, and someone else added yeah. women. But it just goes to show you that to this day, we have hadith books with recollections that can't be trusted. Mm -hmm. Because yeah, we don't know, you know, if Aisha's, I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of leaning towards what Gondal is saying, that Aisha was wrong here and that, you know, her, her criticism of the Hadith is probably not correct because there's a bunch of them. And we know, yeah. but, but maybe it is. I mean, at the end of the day, we're not Muslim and we don't really care about the fic of it. But just, just, as, a, just as a point of, of content, contention, it just goes to yeah. show you that even the companions themselves had arguments about Hadith. Mm -hmm. Started 1400 mm -hmm. years ago, and now imagine after 1400 years, damn, like that is going to be amplified. Those problems, they're going to snowball over time. They're not going to get better over time. Well, they're going to get the, worse. The point, is, the point is, there was no need for Muhammad to ever compare women with donkeys and dogs in the first place, even if he retracted it later on. Because we have mm -hmm. to understand that the Quran says, that he does not speak from himself, he speaks only what is revealed to him, especially religious matters. So you're trying to at one point say, if he did say the dogs and women or donkeys are equal, well, that means he got it from Allah. 
And then Aisha saying, and then he may be retracted because the hadith later on, he was okay with him passing if he put an azar or that barrier in front. Mm-hmm. So like I said, it's just problematic. Why does this nonsense even exist in the best religion and the epitome of like... Uh, no, but the, uh, the, hadith I, the hadith I gave you, um, mm-hmm. essentially, uh, it, was, it wasn't the Sahaba saying it to her. It was uh, a group of uneducated or uh, like people who weren't the Sahaba. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. I understand. We've already, I totally understand that there is a dis- discussion yeah, anyway, between anyway, between but, Sahaba. But yeah, it's just going in circle at that point. But yeah, that, yeah. that, wasn't, uh, that was just like the only hadith I wanted to comment on. But yeah, the no other problem. stuff about the Quran, yeah. So mm-hmm. you can't take supernatural uh, parts of the Quran and say, okay, that's not why it's false. I mean, you, could, you can obviously do that just to make fun of it. And I'm sure you have other reasons to believe why it's false. But I mean, I can't just open. Uh, the Hindu scriptures, and then look at uh, the stories, and then say it's false because of this. Even if it's wild, there's other. Okay, okay. <clears throat> I'll ask you a simple question: Do angels exist, and can you prove me they talk to humans? That's the fundamental, no. fundamental uh, supposition of religion. Because if you can't prove that, then I have no reason to accept any of your supernatural premises. I don't need to give you any benefit of the doubt. I need to analyze your book. So here's something you understand. Like, as an atheist or an outsider, I'm not going to look at the Quran and try to analyze from its own circular logic and circular explanations it has created for itself. No, I'm going to find a book and I'm going to be like, okay, this book has X, Y, Z claims about this, 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 and this. Okay, this actually fits in with a lot of previous mythologies. The stories are copied over. And from a very holistic view, you can easily determine that, man, this isn't from God. Like, come on. Yeah, we can see Not the evolution as, of the stories too. Yes, exactly. You will see all of it. Yeah, no, like uh, one thing. One thing I want made by. You can analyze so, the claims made by the Quran. You can you can look at the prophecies. You can look at the oh, yeah. prophecies in the Bible. Exactly. You can look at all these exactly. different things to yes. see that. And all, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Can I, uh, can I ask are... a question? Can I ask you a question? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you think it's possible that um, Ganesh? Was really a man that you know uh, was it Shiva? Was it Shiva or uh, wish uh, Krishna came back? I forget which god it was, and he saw this this beautiful young man with his wife. So he got angry, he chopped off his head, and then his wife is like, "You killed a son." Um, he's like, "That's a son?" Like you know, and she's like, "Yeah, you made me pregnant before you left, and he's grown up now, and he's a big man." And the guy's like, "Oh crap!" And he went and he found the elephant, chopped off the elephant's head, and put on the head of the boy, and that's a Ganesh. Do you believe that's possible? Is no, that possible? I don't believe in Hinduism. No, no, no. You just yeah. said that mm. you don't believe in Hinduism, but you're saying it could be possible because it's a supernatural claim and we shouldn't deny supernatural claims. You just said that. I mean, Is you can't possible? verify if any Islam, super- if, if the prophet cut off the head of a, <laughs> of a companion and he put an elephant head on it and that elephant head became his best friend, um, is that po- if you read that in the Hadith book, you'd believe it? Uh, no. I mean, what? Why not? You're believing every other thing in the Hadith book that doesn't make as much sense as that. I mean, it depends on whether the Hadith is uh, Sahih and all sahih that. Okay. Sahih. Okay. okay, I'll ask you a very Sahih Hadith. I'll open it. Um, do you believe Muhammad talked to stones? I'm going to ask you explicit yes or no questions. Okay. I don't know. Did, okay. There is a Hadith in Sahih Muslim that Muhammad used to hear stones talking to him. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. It's some doubt. Do you believe that to be true? I would have to look at the hadith and then. Well, I'm showing it to you on screen right now. Yeah. It's in Sahih Muslim. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, I guess, yeah. I'm I'm wondering why you're even doubting it if it's in the hadith. I mean, okay. as a Muslim, you have to accept the hadith, right? Yeah. So, know. and the thing is, now here's something: if you doubt Sahih Muslim, mm-hmm. then you doubt basically all of Sunni Islam because the hadith in Sahih Muslim are in doubt. Then Bukhari goes under the truck, and then like that, all other books, right? So, what I'm asking you: do you explicitly believe that stones talk to Muhammad? Uh, if this hadith is true, then yeah. Okay, let's go to another one. Do you think let's 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 ask some questions? Let's mm. go to another hadith. Uh, By the way, I hope you don't one. mind, right? Like we're not we're just having a conversation here. So if you don't no, feel bro, comfortable, no, no, fine. Yeah, yeah. like just feel look, free and I, say don't, I don't know much about hadith and everything, 
but okay. I was just trying to explain to you that it's it doesn't it doesn't make sense to look at supernatural things in the Quran, and then based off that you uh, you say okay yeah this is not, not true because we can't no 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 this isn't the primary God. argument this has never been the primary argument I'll give you an idea like yeah, I have fine, criticized the fine. Quran from a preservation perspective from a theological perspective from a moral perspective from uh, the perspective of uh, how it was revealed, a, psych a, a neuroscience perspective, and yeah, now perfect. I'm coming to this perspective, right? So when you holistically view things, yes, it's very easy to see it, to, for, for me at least. Yeah, I see what you mean. I know what you mean. I get what you mean. That, yeah, like, do cool. watch this presentation, because I think you missed out on a bunch of the hadith that we've already gone over that are... I'm going to ask you one more thing. Do you believe that cows and wolves can talk? Where does it say that? Like, oh, wait, show me the hadith. Show you. Yeah, right. Yeah. I want to do this with you live. There you go. And the next one. Oh. One second. Yeah, there you go. Talking cows and wolves. Okay, it says Sahih al Bukhari. So the in book reference is book 6138. We're showing you on, uh, on screen right now if you can look. Okay. Do you get it? Yeah, wait, I'm reading it. One second. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's Sorry. fine. Do you believe that? Yeah. Okay. So do you notice a pattern here? Like you yourself were struggling and hesitant at first to even acknowledge that these things could exist in your religion because you know you're better than that and you're smarter than that. No, 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 no. But it's, when we're pointed out, it's literally because I have not seen these hadith. That's all. So, so maybe you might realize something that after looking at the magnitude of the absurdity, because at first, when I first talked to you about these questions, you, uh, yeah. I don't know, I'm unsure, because your initial instinct tells you that this can't be true. It's yeah, only I know, but when you're told as part from, of your look, religions, the, then from, you from the primary claims, I can well, I can see, I can see that Muhammad is a true prophet. So, I mean, isn't this kind of irrelevant? Like no, you said, it's a exactly. We, so we talked about the epistemology part a while back mm -hmm. as well, and that was the same thing I'm addressing again. That if you claim that Muhammad is the prophet, then you can justify anything and everything. Like anybody else could claim that, hey, I believe my prophet is true, and they can justify anything and everything. The point is, when you're when you're an academic and an outsider, you don't analyze the book with its inwards and internal logic, because that's circular. You have to pitch it against something outside of the book. Even the Quran admits that when it says, "Afala taqilun, afala yaqilun," don't you use your brains? When Allah says that, Allah is reducing human rationality as the base, and then using that to analyze the Quran. Okay. So there's a lot of there's a lot of things when well, I call this as the unfalsifiable fallacy where Russell's teapot comes to mind, where if I say that, hey, there is this teapot floating between uh, the earth and the moon orbiting the earth, uh, but it's super, super, super tiny that no telescope can uh, detect it, but it's still there. And I believe it's there. Uh, can you disprove to me if it's not there? And if you can't disprove to me, then it exists. Mm -hmm. I see what the, you mean. Wait, yeah, so, so this so is a. Are, are you saying mm -hmm. that you're saying that the Quran cannot prove itself? Oh no, that's sir, no way. Yeah. <laughs> you should never you use any holy book. You should never use any holy book to prove itself. That's circular reasoning. It's like saying Allah is the prophet of God. Uh, Muhammad is the prophet of God because the Quran says so, and Quran is the word of God because Muhammad says so. No, no, I'm not. And Muhammad, I'm not saying that. I'm saying it poses certain challenges, and if those oh, challenges yeah. aren't met, that can be used as proof. Yeah, yeah but fair. I don't see. Yeah, yeah. that's a. But fair. then again, yeah, you then you admit. Guys disagree. You guys like, would disagree. Any... Oh, you look. No, you guys no, no, would yeah. say that obviously these challenges again, are. Yeah, go on. Again, as soon as it challenges us, it also admits that our rationality has a basis in validity to judge its veracity, i.e., the Quran's truth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, so yeah, I agree. I I agree with what Ray is saying here that. The Quran makes certain challenges, and if the challenges are not met, I mean, even if the Quran didn't make those challenges, even if even without those challenges, we can just analyze it to see is it internally mm -hmm. consistent. Because yeah. the Quran makes certain claims that it's internally yeah. consistent, that it's externally consistent, meaning that whatever it says actually happened. 
that it's every single statement in the Quran is true and actually yep. happened. And basically, this you know, it's a miracle and all that. So it, it's from God. And if there's even one statement that is incorrect, just one, that means yep. the world has to be thrown out, right? And then the Quran yep. also says it's preserved. Allah is preserving it. So if it's not preserved, we throw it out as well. <clears throat> so, of course, you know, there's a lot of, there's a, a thousand reasons why we don't believe in Islam. Yep. This is just exactly, yeah. showing the absurdity mm -hmm. of the, the stories in the Quran is just one. And again, it's not the primary yeah. method. Yeah, you see, oh, I, didn't, I, didn't, I'm not, I wasn't trying to prove anything. I was just saying that um, what, uh, you can use the Quran itself and you can use all the other source material to verify it. It doesn't have to be. I was just saying that um, these miracles, quote unquote miracles, right, as you guys say, um, they can't really be used as an argument, you know? So I mean, I get, I get the what's point. the point of miracles? Yeah. What's the point? What do you mean? What's the point of miracles? Why does Allah perform miracles? To to prove to people at that time that whatever whatever prophet is telling the truth or whatever, or for different okay. reasons. Okay. Yeah. All right. We'll end the call at that. But that was a great conversation. Yeah, thanks, uh, I really yeah. liked uh, the conversation. It was nice that we did uh, dive deeper into topics like epistemology and how from basic assumptions, how to analyze scriptures. That was really good. But again, at the end, my last question was to point out that the whole point of doing miracles is Allah is trying to prove to the human mind outside of the scripture that look out there than the scripture, there's this miracle. Mm -hmm. um, anyways, let's get, uh, let's get a move wait, on. Wait, wait, last thing, last thing, last thing. Okay, yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, so... Obviously, in the past, there were different miracles that were performed. Jesus could perform different miracles. Moses had different miracles. But the Quran claims that it itself is the miracle, and it, yep. and it poses challenges, right? Yes, it does. And obviously, you disagree with those. So yeah, I mean, oh, yeah. that's fine. So, yeah, yeah we, we have specific responses to the stories in the Quran have been copied from sources available to Muhammad, for example. Um, the 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 Yajuj and Majuj thing never happened. Um, the the preservation never it, it wasn't the Quran is not preserved. This wall holes in the Quran narrative thing is real. Um, the yeah. wall challenge of make another surah like it. There's tons of surahs written like it that yeah, are I disagree basically. With the, I disagree with the make a surah like it thing. I don't uh, think that that one's been addressed. Okay, so I'll, I'll explain all. to you. I'll ask you a question just to be very quick. Yeah. Does the Quran stipulate what exactly are the objective uh, points that that challenger needs to meet to meet, like pass the challenge? Um, Does the Quran second. stipulate any of those? One second, one second, one second. Well, I mean, in this case, I mean, I, I obviously can't explain it well. I mean, I'm not uh, very eloquent or anything, but we can look at. Okay. Um, I mean, we can infer from history that, uh, what's it called? Okay, here, yeah, I'll, Alex, I'll ask you another question. Hmm. Languages, the way they evolve, hmm. like you're speaking English, right? English has yeah. words from French and other languages over yeah. the course of years. And hmm. in essence, you can say that languages are actually constantly evolving, right? Yep. So yeah. when the Arabic of the Quran was revealed, the Quranic Arabic hmm. was contingent upon these same very principles of borrowing and whatnot. From many other languages, Aramaic, Syriac, whatnot. Muhammad did it too. In fact, Muhammad would arbitrarily carry words over to the Quran and then give them a new meaning and even just put words there to maintain rhyme. Now, if Muhammad is allowed such privileges under the subjectivity of language, can the challenger not use that? What is stopping me from writing a, a phrase that's half in Arabic, half in Urdu, and one word in English? <laughs> Um, because the Quran I mean, doesn't I'm stipulate not... any objectivity the on the challenge. Yeah, the Quran... there's, no, there's no conditions for this challenge. So what, it's just a surah like it. And if scholars... you do, we, when, when people write surahs like it, sometimes people, will, Muslims will say, oh, it borrows too much from the style of the Quran. Mm -hmm. Or they'll say it's not enough like the Quran. It's a subjective challenge. It's a troll. It's and the a... Quran borrows from pre-Islamic poets. So The challenge is trolling. The that one, that, that's not true. Trolling. The fact that like, it borrows from not, Islamic poets. You cannot... <laughs> win this yeah. challenge because it's not an objective challenge mm -hmm. it's not about how much weight can you lift it's not about can you draw a you know a certain thing with this much depth it's just mm -hmm. make a book like it and is anybody's okay. book like anybody's can you write wait, a book wait, wait, like wait. i don't even know if anyone can write a book exactly like i can it's just in essence it's a beauty it's a challenge of beauty okay then why couldn't the arab poets who were there at the time they did though were 
they did the, though. That's the thing. The language. Why couldn't they do it? They did. They did though. That's the thing. And also, like, if it's just a pretty book in a pretty language, in essence, mm. the Quran has some parts that are beautiful. I'll admit the Amma Bara. But then, if you look at the content of some of them, it's just kind of absurd. It's a pretty book with good poetry, but a lot of stories. So the, the, the you're saying, how do you know that they didn't? How do you yeah, know that they me. didn't? Like, just show me. Obviously. You can, well, you this is the problem. The problem is that the majority of this information that we're getting has mm -hmm. been preserved by Muslims. Even Mufti Abu Layth has admitted this. He said that the problem with this challenge is that the victors, meaning the Muslims, are the other ones who decided what hadith was preserved. And of course, what did they choose to preserve? The most silliest, you know, uh, poetry of... Um, Muslima, like it's an elephant and has a ropey tail, and it's like the silliest things they come up with. There was another man by the name of Ab I think his name was Abdullah ibn Abi Salt, and there he has a bunch of poetry that was actually like Quranic slash biblical prophecies, mm -hmm. Day of Judgment. But the problem is we don't know for sure. A lot of it is fabricated, and we don't know, and scholars don't know, like what was actually written by him and what was written by people after the fact, and is being sort of like you know the the i forget the technical word but they're basically attributing it to him so mm -hmm. unfortunately based on the way history just like you know when you look at science when someone asks why is there not a lot of fossils you need the exact conditions for a fossil to mm -hmm. be safe it has to be preserved right away it has to be covered with a certain type of soil or whatever the majority of fossils will never find them because they get destroyed by nature right the same thing sure. with when it comes to the history of islamic history we don't have, we just don't have the information because the Muhammad killed the poets that were against him. Why would he kill poets? Why would he kill slave girls writing poetry if he was not threatened by it? Why does he, why does the Quran keep insisting it's not poetry, it's not poetry, and he is not a poet? Muhammad had a big problem with poets. He he sent out people to murder, you know, Kaab ibn Ashraf, who was writing poetry against him. Slave mm -hmm. girl, yeah. I think Farhana, and I don't have the full mm -hmm. list, but Islam, there's like a big list of people he oh, killed. Abdullah, his, his so we don't have any of the poetry from that time. Is that what you're saying? We, we do have some poetry. I can find, I even recited a few uh, surah, this uh, surah Sharik, remember that one? Sir? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I remember that. I remember that. It's allegedly pre-Islamic and it has the word Najm al which is literally and Layl al Ghasik, Ghasak al Layl. It's got so many borrowings from the Quran. Yeah. So this well, is. The half is. <laughs> yeah. You're yeah, half is, man. Right. Oh my God. Okay. Anyways, yeah. Thank bro, you. This is um, a good discussion. Again, yeah. obviously, I'm yeah. not like a, I'm not a scholar or anything, so I can't really voice my opinions properly. And I kind of just woke up no, and all. So, it, man, you did. No, no, that's you totally did fine. Did you did good. good. It was in. It was a, I really enjoy conversations where I don't have to feel that I'm supposed to be yelling or you're gonna yell at me. We can be civil, agree to disagree, no, no, like no, we no, just no. did, right? And no, I and no, I appreciate no. that. <laughs> Yeah, thank you so, so much. Uh, so we want to get back to slides, though, and um, uh, because we took you took so much time, the other caller is gonna have yeah, to wait. So, sorry, everybody. Yeah. No, 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 problem. That's a nice, uh, <laughs> nice conversation. That's the whole point. That's the call whole point, right? Yeah. Do call again. Thanks. Bye. See you. All right, back to slides, uh, and then we'll okay. take the next call. Ooh, so uh, let's get back to it. So here's an interesting one where Allah tells us that in the day of judgment, you will come, and then you will reach the hair fire. And then their eyes and their hearing, so your ears will start talking, and then your skin will start talking, and then your fingers, your eyes, and then you will be talking back and forth to your body parts. Hey, hands, why are you talking about me? Oh, and it's gonna be just weird. This weird torture anime psycho scene is gonna be going on. Well, let's go on. Okay, so this one's just this is shout out to Yasser Qadi first. Okay, Gog and Magog. <laughs> and uh, so one thing is this tribe is apparently hidden behind a wall. So the story goes that Dulkar Lane, who is allegedly sometimes known as Alexander the Great, let's just call him the man with two horns. <laughs> he's going and comes across a tribe and he's like, 
oh man, these guys like cause us a lot of trouble. Can you save us? So he's like, yeah, sure, bro, no problem. So I'll erect between you and them a barrier. And then he's like, he gets iron and then he gets like copper or some stuff. And then he melts it and he puts it between the two mountains. And then the Yajuju and Yajuju are stuck forever. So apparently this is a legit physical place where he blocked the mountain off. I don't know if it's an underground cave, what it is, if it's just a valley, if it's just some Harry Potter cloaking invisibility cloak tribe that nobody can see and is hidden there. But the whole <laughs> point is that invisibility <laughs> that this tribe's gonna come out right before the day of judgment and annihilate the whole world. And they're like thousands of times more than humans. And they, if you go into their descriptions, their ears are like blankets that they can fold over and sleep in. It's, just, it's all bizarre. Uh, so Yasser Khadi was like having a hard time believing this. And like now is what I ask again, epistemology. Why did Yasser Khadi not realize that if he believes in Allah and Muhammad, why is he having these doubts about these things, right? Why is he not using the epistemology card and saying, oh, I believe in Allah and Muhammad. These aren't an issue. So you're getting it right that this still bothers so, people. <laughs> yeah, and and there's it's there's a there's a scale here of uh of things that we're talking about. There's things which are verifiable. Like this is one example that is that you have an intersection of the real world and the supernatural. Do you know what I mean? Like so when we're talking about walls being created and people being protected and that's one thing. If we're talking about jinns being shot by invisible, you know, like invisible jinns being shot at, then then that's not that's unfalsifiable. So in this case, this is something that actually is a bigger problem than the jinn's issue, you know? Mm -hmm, exactly. For the very reason that it's in the real world. Mm -hmm. So Continue. then, so a, a few uh, varying opinions on this. So some people say it's the Chinese people. It was uh, because the Great Wall of China. Some people yeah. have said that Chinese or the people are the Gog and Mag or the Mongols, how they swept over the whole world in the 12th century or whatnot. Well, um, it can't be. And then Yas Right? Yeah, they, 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 yeah, yeah, the judgment didn't come. <laughs> <laughs> so then there's another opinion where like Yasser Qadi attributed it to somebody else that he did not name, and that it was they might be zombies, you know. So Gog and Magog might be zombies coming to take over the world at the end of time with some neurological virus or something, you know. So uh it's kind of interesting that this this thing uh, and it's actually found in the Bible too, uh, if I remember, Agog and Magog as well. Yeah. So again, we see another borrowing slash weird mythical be creature beings coming to destroy the world at the end of the yep. day. It's just as a... Uh, Gog and Magog are just down the road where the sun sits sets in a muddy spring. Makes sense, Alexander Walt off his... <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Uh, um, live, live evil 34 says Solomon's ring allows us to control jinn, which means we can defeat Gog and Magog. Oh, that's why they're trying to find his hidden magic stuff and the temple yeah. of Solomon. <laughs> <laughs> Gog and Magog seem to arise from Alexander the Great's legends. Yeah, that's actually, cool. I don't know if it goes, but I think it's before that, um, because it's in the Bible. Maybe it is actually from that. It's a good point. I'm not really yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, Gog and Magog are in the biblical, but the story from the Quran appears to yes, obviously this is uh, yes, yeah. very much so. But you mm -hmm. know, there's there's a little bit if you if you do a little bit more research on it, it appears that there's Jewish. I mean, it's so funny. It always goes back to Jewish myths. The, mm -hmm. There's Jewish references to Alexander the Great, and there's the Quranic references to Alexander the Great, and they both appear to be coming from an earlier source, right? So there's there's uh -huh. like a there's a common myth. That all of these guys are building off, that's actually predates the 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 romance even, right? Which oh, is wow. very interesting. Mm -hmm. But anyway, I mean that's getting a little bit technical. Yeah, uh, yeah. One ring, so it's the middle earth of its story. Of its story. Oh my god. <laughs> okay. Continue. Yeah, let's go for a few more slides. Okay. Cyclops returns. Do -do -do -do. The Jal Al Masih the Jal, the Antichrist, whatever you want to call him. So, like we were talking about earlier, at the end of time, there's this guy who's gonna come. He is not uh, he, an al Masih Dajjal is blind in the right eye, and his eye looks, his other eye looks like a protruding gray. Now, what's funny is this same pattern is switched in another hadith where he's blind in the left eye and his right eye is like a protruding gray. So it's flipped, but either way, one, there's this guy coming who's gonna have these superpowers. 
and he's going to raise the people from the dead and then he's going to make these fake uh, paradise in heaven on earth and he's going to ride this beast on or a donkey around the earth uh, some people say it refers to a plane but yeah muslims are waiting for this to happen this is this is the climax yeah waiting for the mahdi to come waiting for the jesus to come I back i saw on or whatever from <laughs> <laughs> CCTV so uh this is very important so as a kid growing up i was constantly reminded of this the karam and kathi being the two sh- uh, angels sitting on your shoulders writing down your deeds the angel on the right side writes down the good deeds the angel on the left write down the bad deeds and then there's this weird thing where if you have bad thoughts or bad dreams or just before salah you're about to start to avoid the bad thoughts you go to 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 or you spit on the left side So I don't know if there's a connection the left angel being bad or just <laughs> left side being bad. I don't know. Yeah. And you want to yeah. watch the left leg first as well, right? But it's it's what's that movie where uh, I think it's the ring or something where the this lady is sitting on the this invisible genie lady goes to sitting on the person's body the whole time and he only realizes that at the end of the movie when he stands on a weighing machine when his weight is doubled. <laughs> I haven't seen it. Yeah. All right. Oh, oh my favorite the burak the ancient ufo spaceship allah secret technology uh, that has been causing havoc for millennia and carrying people to heaven on and off carrying prophets around so uh this story is very important but one thing i want to point out to you is what is the burak because some people say it's a beast of unknown majesty and whatever but we actually get a description in sahih muslim I was then brought a white beast which is called Al-Bura. It's bigger than a donkey and smaller than a mule. So it's a donkey horse mule hybrid kind of thing. And it's white in color. And it's straight so it takes one step it's so long his its jump as as far as you can see. And Muhammad was mounted on it and then we went forth till we reached the lowest heaven. Now some hadith says he rode the beast to Bait al-Maqdis and then from there he went on with Gabriel, but this one said that he went to Bait al-Maqdis and he rode it to the lowest heaven as well. So he actually flew on the horse. <laughs> so there is that too. Now another thing is before this thing began, like listen to this, I was near the house, a state between sleep and wakefulness when I heard someone say he is the third amongst two person then he came to me and took me with him so these two people come and they cut muhammad's chest open and they have this bowl of zamzam water and then they wash his heart in the water bowl and then they put it back in he replied that it was up to the lower part of his abdomen and then my heart was ex- and then it's positioned back in the original position and it was filled with faith and wisdom now the funny part is the heart don't get filled with faith and wisdom because it doesn't do anything because it's all up here obviously muhammad didn't know that so even the metaphor is wrongly placed if it is a metaphor this didn't happen once it happened a few times um muhammad's chest got open in an almost identical fashion and it got washed when he was a really young child at the age of 6 or 7 and at that point his guardians said that he was having a stroke as what, what they said but this 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 whole bizarre story of him then going to heaven and talking and knocking on the first heaven talking to Abraham Moses Jesus yara 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 chit chatting with them praying with all these dead people then having a chit chat back and forth with five or 10 times between Allah and Moses and Allah and Moses and then having this elaborate vision of heaven and hell where like people's lips are being cut up their heads are being smashed and these hoodies and what not uh but yeah that was uh, the night journey of muhammad which is what known as isra al maraj it shows up in the quran subhanallazi asra bi abdihi laylan min al masjid al haram ila al masjid al aqsa and uh, what's also interesting is this story is not exclusive to islam funny thing arfawadas was a zoroastrian priest about 2 300 years before muhammad i believe and he actually had almost an identical journey when an angel came and he wrote a beast he went to heaven met all these other saints in heaven and saw heaven and hell met god and came back down what's funny is is imam bukhari was of persian origin and zoroastrianism is from that region so it does make sense that that influence could have caused this uh, let's say arabization of this this heaven journey 
and that made its way into uh, Bukhari and whatnot because the heaven journey in the Quran is referenced in such a vague manner. Some people say it's almost like the verse was inserted later on. It's only one verse or two. Oh, wow. Yeah. Fascinating. I didn't know any of this. Um, I'm going to read a couple of comments. Uh, are we done with this slide? Yep. Okay, and then we'll take, a, we have Ali rating. So the Mast Elb made a great series of great videos about Gog and Magog. Mm -hmm. That is true. So the calf. Um, someone's asking, do you know Uthman ibn al Huwayrit is a conspiracy. He was prepared to be a prophet, but was killed by elves just before him. Have you ever heard this before? Oh, no. Um, That's weird. There's a Victorian area shopping arcade called Gog. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, yeah, we should, we should actually ask Harris to go there and take a live tour. <laughs> <laughs> I found a Gog in my Gog, right? Uh, my parents used to tell me my left shoulder was drooping when I did something bad. That's oh my god, poor kid. Dude. <laughs> have, have you heard that? I never heard of this before. There must be some culture. No. Thing. Yeah. The Antichrist, the Dajjal, is short, hand toed, woolly haired, one eyed, sightless, neither protruding nor deep seated. If you're confused about him, know that your Lord is not one eyed. Okay, so Allah is two eyes. <laughs> Thank you, Allah. Or zero eyes. I don't know. I'm assuming he has no eyes. Well, Allah shouldn't need eyes. Wait a minute. Yeah, it makes no sense. Know. Allah is not like us. It's, it's, so like, it's weird. Like so the Quran weird. keeps saying that you know Allah is not like anything, but then He has a shank and He has a hand and He has He's like Shamad in early. Yeah, it's weird. <laughs> Sir Ash says you're doing an amazing job. Thank you so much for everything you're Thank doing. You. Okay. You, Sarah. Thank you, Um Okay, that's all the comments that we have to lead today. Yeah. All right, let's let's keep going. So we want to take let's yeah. take one call because we have one one call waiting. Mm -hmm. all right. Hello. Ali. Hello, Ali. Hey, hello. How are you? Good. How's it is going? Is that Ali from earlier again? Uh, yes. Yeah, actually, it is. Okay, how's it going? Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm. I'm good. And uh, by the way, I, I know if uh, if it's if it's getting late or I'm uh, like you, you know, taking too long, just don't hesitate to stop me right there. I, I won't mind. But um, uh, can you we'll hear? We'll try me? to keep it quick if possible. Yeah. Okay, uh, so yeah, I mean, you know, uh, before uh, uh, letting me go the last time, uh, Gondal did mention that, you know, uh, continue to see that and you'll see how uh, how inconsistent it is with the science that we know uh, today. Mm -hmm. And then later on, I mean, you know, I, I was, uh, to that, I was just about to say that, you know, uh, when you link this stream with our scientific concept and then comes the question of miracles, then the thing is, miracles, the, the mojiza, that which comes from ajiz, by its very nature, it will be in contradiction with the science that we know. Because, you know, it's a, it's a metaphysical reality, and then we can go there. But, you know, the, uh, uh, the premise itself where we are talking is, is you know, different. No, so, I, tot I totally understand your point, but I'm going to ask you something. Is why does Allah do these absurd and petty miracles and not some substantial ones that can actually be used to be validated? Like the whole point of miracles is to give humans evidence that there is a God, right? I mean, so uh, why doesn't Allah uh, do give one to us where it can actually be definitively without a doubt proven? Why and even the one that, like the one about splitting the moon, like right no died. so uh, in in this case i will uh, i will uh, bring uh, the time because you know that's what and and by the way i'm also uh, not a scholar but i will uh, maintain the level of you know the things that i know so in this case i will bring up time because let's see uh, f keeping the circular reasoning aside if you see the she camel that was given to uh, saleh then uh, it was said that you know a prophet is coming to you with a clear message and a miracle will be given to this prophet at this time in order for you to take heed and then follow along. And then uh, that miracle comes and uh, they kill the she-camel. And then in the end, it's like, you know, um, the stubbornness is what got the better of them. That's what we take from it. So okay. if the miracle of that time was enough for them and they're seeing it from their own eyes, but, you know, uh, uh, the stubbornness gets better of them, then, you know, that's the case of time. Uh, you, your question about uh, ab absurdity of, you know, uh, those things, I'm not uh, going to get into that. The reason is because it it's once again, you know, we're boiling it down to opinions and perspectives. When you say that it's it, it contradicts with science, 
I'm saying it's not related to science at all. But no, uh, later on, with this the, is something I need to make very. This is a distinction that before we go on, because this is a very weird idea that's gone on into a poly, uh, religious people's head about science and differentiation of religion. Have to understand that science is is a tool that makes claims about reality. Religion also makes claims about reality. They're both different lines in what is ought to be true. Now, the problem occurs is when religion makes claims, let's say virgin birth, it's also making a claim about biology, okay, which is parthenogenesis. Science will tell you that in humans, it's impossible, like straight up. In other mammals, in, in mammals, actually, you know, some other species, yes, right? So when we see that, for example, the Quran will say that Allah created the heaven in, in this order, okay, in a specific order, which contradicts how what modern cosmology tells us. But what's interesting is whenever the Quran describes something that Muhammad could see and feel, it's always okay. Whenever he gets into ideas that he's speculating, he gets it wrong. And this shows that this is just an average seventh century mind. For example, when Muhammad said, look at the, the dates or these gardens, his descriptions are on point or how the plants grow and Allah takes the life out and whatnot, or the waves are going away in the site water cycle almost. But when it comes to how did what are what are the shooting stars? There is fires pelted at genies. What are how did Allah create the heaven? Oh, he made the heaven earth in six days, and after that he created the stars. Do you understand what okay. I'm trying to say? So this uh, no, no, I I uh, I, I understand. Okay, so mm -hmm. uh, in this matter, you know, when when it comes to uh, the miracles, I mean, you know, it, it would be okay to say that we we agree to disagree but in the call with that person array uh, a few uh, like you know a few minutes back you did mention that you know this is not the only reason that you're uh, you don't believe mm -hmm. so then mm -hmm. you, uh, you said that when you look at it holistically then you come to that conclusion then it is you know it is basically at the end of the uh, at the end of the day a story that we are giving for the reason as to why thing a is not true but at the you know at the same time, there is overwhelming uh, proof mm -hmm. given, you know, across uh, history about why the thing A is actually true. So we can go into that. And but okay. you know, my I think my I point think we need that, to go to some more bare bones right now. I'm going to ask you a few questions, like I asked the other guy, just to can I say if pause it? Because yeah, okay. I I have a big problem with this idea that people are given miracles. And then they reject them, and then they deserve to go to hell. This doesn't make any sense. When I, what I've seen is that when David Blaine goes on TV or even on stage, and he he shows George Bush like you know a card that pops out of air, his card that signed, he's amazed beyond recognition. Like he can't believe what he just saw in front of his eyes. And I'm talking about a simple card trick. Now, if I had a true miracle, if I made a she camel, I don't know why it matters as a she camel, but she camel come out of a rock. And everybody saw this, and I'm in the seventh, not even seventh century. We're talking like way past, like you know, first century or even BC. I'm like pretty, pretty much claiming to talk to God. You're telling me that human beings would not believe that, and they would say, "Oh, you're, you're, you're a liar," and this and that. And if they did, whose fault is that? That would be the fault of the Creator that made us, made those people skeptical. Even in the brain, if you look at the brain science. People have tendencies towards either being skeptical people or being believers, let's call them. And all has to do with dopamine levels. The dopamine levels in your brain can mess with the way that you see the world. High People with high dopamine, we, like there's a theory that Joan of Arc and maybe Buddha and many of the great visionaries, maybe Muhammad too, had high dopamine levels to the point that they would see patterns where patterns don't exist, they would see things and they would they would come up with and conspiracy theorists tend to be high dopamine as well because they're like connecting the dots in ways that don't make sense, right? They're doing things. So if you're telling me that this is a real thing that happened, I have a lot, I have a big problem with that because I don't believe it, first of all, that this there's really a miracle that people like like God lifts a mountain in front of these people and they still don't believe them. Like this is God. Like and then they go worship the calf. And then, <laughs> who, 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 who is making this shit up? This is not true. This is not the humanity. Oh, I Ali's, Ali's battery is low. He's saying he might lose us. Okay. 
Okay. Um, I just anyways, and <laughs> okay. <laughs> I just want to do one thing before go you go. Oh, he's, he's gone. gone. <laughs> okay. um, I just wanted to ask him a few questions. We'll come back if you have time, okay? Uh, okay, Sarah, hello. Hello, Sarah. You have to unmute your mic. I can't unmute you. You have to unmute yourself. There you go. Uh, hi, guys. How are you? Good. I'm how are you? Great. Good, good. You don't see me, right? You just like see yes. my picture. Yes, correct? Yeah. Correct. yeah. Yeah. Cool. I just wanted to say I am so glad and I'm grateful, you know, the world has people like you and we need to speak up. Uh, I am doing stuff behind the scene. I am on my way. Of course, I am an ex-Muslim. And I'm really, I, I'm just like grateful humanity and the world has people like you. And I wanted to say thank you so much. And I support you 100% behind you what you guys do and uh, thank you so much yeah and it's, it's time it's time for people to come forward i live in united states i'm from america u.s and um i am writing my book and i am on my way so definitely we're gonna we're gonna have to fight together no i thank think you it's, for the kind of list. yeah appreciate it yeah thank you so thank much and it's a it's an ongoing struggle and it's the struggle of the is. pen uh, not the sword. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. No. It's jihad al qalam. <laughs> no, I think is 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 we have to. Um, and if we don't do it, who's going to do it? Who's going to speak up? And I know in the West, in the West, it's just like I don't think people understand what real Islam does to human being. You know. Because these people who are literally killing, even today, like the teacher in France, it's just so sad. It makes me like really upset. It makes me like we need to, re when is, when are people going to wake up? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, thank you, yeah. We're, we're working on it. So hopefully it'll, it's yes. A, and uh, thank you so up. much. And thank you. Keep it up. The great work. And uh, we'll do it together. And yep. thank you. And nice to meet okay, you thank both. Thank you so much. Thanks, okay, bye. bye. Yep. Bye. Hey, okay, we at least got right. one, uh, a few Muslims to admit that they believe in uh, talking bulls and cows and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> not all of us. You know, that's oh. the point. You know, I, I just want to say, like, that's the point. That's the point you would make. <laughs> I just want to emphasize this point. Do you believe in talking that it's possible talking <laughs> bulls and blah, blah, blah? No, 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 no. I mean, I'm not sure. Let me show you the hadith. Okay, I believe it. I believe it now. <laughs> like, come on. Hadith. This is literally the whole point that what religion does to your brain is it'll make you believe in ideas that only insane, insane people can believe on their own. <laughs> That's a quote from Sam Harris, I think. Sorry. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. So we have the, oh, things are getting hot and naughty in here. <laughs> big eyed, perfumed, sexy whale virgins. Oh, oh my God. Allah, calm down. So. In, in Allah's glory and magnificence, because he is the creator of beauty, he says that in Jannah, Allah has created women that are modest, they don't look at other men, and they're guarded inside tents from genies and humans, as, and nobody's touched them before. And they're like rubies and coral. Now one wonders, like, why does Allah need to put them in tents? There's no sin in Jannah. They're not going to get raped by genies or humans. <laughs> so why are they in tents? Secondly, there's hadiths that say that there will be a Juma Bazaar, a Friday market in heaven. We mentioned this in the Heaven podcast, and that the, the women will still not be allowed to go outside. Only the men will go to the market. <laughs> so, I, uh, Harris actually got a clip of a Peace TV speaker in Urdu saying that, it's his big beard. And he's like, look, you know, this shows that Allah does not like people going into markets, even in heaven. So why go to the market in the world? It's a bad fahish place. <laughs> wow. Yeah, so this is the reasoning. But on the right side is what we get is, <laughs> oh boy, the description of uh, some of these khuris, these virgins that await the, the Muslims. So Allah says <clears throat> that uh, if or a place equal to a foot in paradise. Okay. And if one of the women of paradise looked at the earth, merely glanced at it, she would fill the whole space between them, that is the earth and the heavens, with light. <laughs> no, no, no. This is the whole universe is full of light. 
all of the known so visibly. Yeah, I don't know how this is uh, so weird. This is some uh, ecstatic heaven virgins. I don't know, man. And then if her veil was lifted, I'm sorry, if her perfume would fill the whole world and the veil of her face is better than the whole world and whatever is it. So just the veil of this virgin is more precious than all of the world combined and everything, the whole universe. Can you imagine the absurdity that a virgin in heaven is more valuable than the whole universe stuff like jesus what? holy this is this is some next level this weird is, fetishization this so weird, yeah <laughs> i another oh one. my god transparent sexy virgin prostitutes okay <laughs> this one's just like okay this will really show you how bizarre the mentality and thinking of muhammad was and not only that, the guy had no clue that beauty standards are so extremely subjective. Like, for example, he says he likes transparent women, but I don't. Who likes <laughs> transparent women? That's so weird. It says yeah. here that the hoodies will have transparent skin that you can see the marrow inside their bones, through their bones and flesh. That's weird. What? Super weird. So again, it's just this weird fetishization, objectification of women, and this weird obsession with sex in heaven. That again, <laughs> in we were in our heaven podcast, we came across these two uh, scholars, and one of them said that uh, there's a verse in the Quran, uh, Surah Yasin, in Ashab al Yom fi Shugul in Fakihun, that they'll be in joy and having fun, the people of Jannah, and then the Tafsir goes that they'll be busy tearing hymens every <laughs> morning. So. Crazy. I mean, it doesn't. It doesn't stop. It is crazy. All right, we'll yeah. we'll, uh, we'll do a couple more slides and we'll try to finish up. Um, this yeah. one, is, this one is funny. It's like the verse. <laughs> <T -Rex. laughs> so here's what's funny: is like uh, it says that when Adam was in heaven, his length was sixty cubits, which is what one hundred ninety feet or one hundred and twenty <laughs> feet, something yeah. like that. That's how tall he was. And then the people followed him, continue to diminish in size up to this day. So from that day on, humans have been getting shorter. Now, it's, it's just bizarre because we've actually gone the reverse. You've been getting taller from what I've, what <laughs> I know, all the yeah. fossils go. Yeah. And not only that, like it's impossible for humans to be that big. In fact, if you go do basic research, you'll realize that increasing the body size of a, 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 a biological organism increases the insides of it by a root of like exponential of four. Mm -hmm. So if you make twice my, me twice as big, the heat being emitted from my body might be four times as high and mm -hmm. I can spontaneously combust. <laughs> it's actually impossible. Capacity, yeah. Exactly. And muscle mass, bone strength, so many, so many issues. Now, yeah. how were dinosaurs that big? Back in the day, there was a lot more oxygen in the Earth's atmosphere, and too much oxygen causes oxygen toxicity, which can kill you. So to adapt to that, organisms had to get bigger so they don't uh, die of the overabundance of oxygen. When the oxygen went down, our body sizes decreased, and that's how it's been. Hmm. Oh yeah. But it's definitely not that humans were six, uh, 60 cubits. We were never that tall. It's impossible for <laughs> yeah, us. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. Um, okay, so I, I think if we can end off there, there's uh, maybe we'll take one more last caller. And then um, I just want to share, before we take the last caller, um, I want to share the sign-up link for my mailing list. If you guys can please go and join on there. Um, you know, getting a strike on the main channel made it harder for me to keep in touch with everybody. And so just to not have to play with YouTube's, you know, policies and deal with the, you know, you can only do this and you can only do that and you can only send so many links and you can only promote this. And, mm -hmm. you know, this this is like direct access from from us to you guys, from me specifically, uh, for live stream announcements, anything. It won't be too many emails. I don't send more than one a week. Uh, your email will be kept safe and won't be shared with anybody else. Please do sign up on the list. There's about, there's about a thousand people on there right now. So please do join at some point. If you're offering any, uh, if you write any eBooks or anything like that, you'll be the first to know. <laughs> um, so please do that. Um, is there a comment you want me to share? Yeah, I just saw a comment from Yasin Al Fateh about the commentary of Ibn Hajar on what happened to Adam when he was kicked out of heaven. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> it says that an Adam fell from heaven. His feet were on the ground while his head was in heaven. <laughs> oh yeah. What the? 
<laughs> oh, because he's so big? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's hilarious. All right, so, um, uh, that's, that's hilarious. How was he breathing like high up there? <laughs> the pressure differential was too much. Eh? <laughs> even, the, even the gravity, man. Oh, time dilation, bro. <laughs> <laughs> All right, last caller, Aladdin. Hello again. Welcome back. Oh, you remember me. Uh, hello again. Uh, yes, um, hi. Hello. How's it going? <laughs> yeah, last time we talked, um, I didn't send you an email. Uh, you owe me an, an email uh, to arrange for, for uh, probably being a guest on, on an Arabic channel. But you can speak Arabic if you want, but you can speak English also. And that's extend to both of you. Um, Thank you. <laughs> and uh, my... The thing that I wanted to talk uh, tonight about, even though I know that you are going, um, it's the end of the show now, so sorry to just get late here, but um, what's what's your uh, stand or what's your understanding of the morality coming from an Islamic culture? We define morality probably in a different way than most of the scholars and most of the people who are talking about this subject now. And um, coming from an Arabic, also uh, the the distinction between morality and ethics is not very clear, especially when you're talking in Arabic about what is the translation of morality and what's the translation of ethics. Um, so I just wanted to see what you think about what is moral. Uh, why things are moral or immoral according to you, and uh, what was the morality uh, meaning when you were Muslim before you, you left Islam? Uh, thank you again, and uh, wish you a good night. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, so I'll, I'll give my two cents on it first. Uh, so firstly, like the goal of morality and how it's understood is vividly different between religion and, and secularism or non-religion. To me, morality is just like in another adaptation of our body. It's an adaptation of our brain. For example, like our hands adapted to the environment, our brain adapted to the environment to make uh, predictions and expectations and based on that, help us make choices that aid our survival in the long term. This is in essence what I would define as morality. Now, what happens is a lot of the times we have groupings and people come together and then humans will collectively agree on a set of rules as a community or society and then they'll follow those rules and in general like they are made to can induce uh, survival and values and whatnot that can lead to in the long run for survival on the other hand religious morality isn't made just for survival actually it's completely misplaced where the point of religious morality most of the time ends up being is not to incur the wrath of a divine being. And a lot of times it, it counteracts sometimes the survival mechanism. For example, having sex is normal. And if somebody acts on it in 7th century Arabia, it was totally normal for somebody to do that. You would get stoned to death, right? But it, like I said, also the problem is with, the, with religion. Religion can't really prove that it's also on itself objective in any way, shape, or form. They're, they can't prove their God is objective. So in essence, when you look at it from an outsider perspective, religion just looks like uh, uh, <clears throat> where there's these people coming across, popping up in different cultures and different pockets of time, and then they all have their different evolving moral compasses based on where they're living. And uh, these people put all of their moral values in the mouth of God, but in fact, at the end, it's just different humans in different times making moral claims, attributing it to something supernatural. And that's how I see it. It's, it's, uh, it's moral relativism. It's, uh, it's at the core of even religion. Like even in the Quran, you'll see this tendency where the alcohol was first okay, then it was only banned for Salah, then it was gradually banned overall. So you see that Muhammad is also adapting slowly to the needs of his time. And if you remove God out of the equation, it becomes pretty clear that these are all, in essence, human efforts. It's just that our biases and stuff can misconstrue where our values go to. So, for example, if to me, the survival of my son is more important than, you know, uh, his afterlife, you know, 
so there's a whole thing like if you value the afterlife more are you going to make choices in this life that aren't as conducive to a comfortable life or a more let's say uh, more geared towards survival in this life because you don't really care about this life but like the quran says right that this is nothing but a delusion there's a lot of like i said it's a huge topic morality and i was just trying to be very simplistic uh, but that's my two cents on it uh, just before I go yeah, to I, uh, Abdullah, um, and yeah. uh, I think I mixed that up. I owe you an email, right? You don't owe me anything. That's right. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't. I didn't find any email from you. Yeah, it's Abdullah yeah, at gmail dot com. I'm sorry. That's uh, it was a very. Oh, interesting. okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. To, okay. I get it the other way, but yeah, uh, for no uh, the uh, I I heard you saying that um, morality is more of a, a biological foundation if if that's what i heard right or, yeah so yeah you think that's it's more of a it's a priori or a foundation that's found in human rather than it's a choice well if, if you want to really go into the depths of morality then you can go into the evolution of apes and then primatology and then the neurons where like the the development of the mirror neuron system it's it's it's, it's, a, it's a deep rabbit hole and then evolutionary psychology how and why creatures do this and that. and um, But at the essence of it, I see that just uh, your brain is a part of your body, just like your hand is a part of your body. They have different functions and different outcomes and whatnot. The brain is an organ that thinks about things and an adaptation it has to its environment, which comes out in what we call ethics and morality. It's an adaptation to the environment. It's a mental adaptation sometimes, you know? So it's, that's how I see it. And humans have always collectively come together and agreed amongst themselves whatever is true and not. Again, we can obviously derive with experience that certain principles will generally lead to a better quality of life. Or for example, like what we have as human rights, they're obviously subjective. They're not grounded objective. There's not like a thing in the heaven, a tablet where it says human rights or charter of human rights. No, it's an abstract concept, right? So. He said, in that sense, morality is an adaptation. And we humans are, let's just say, much better than the morality that we find in books that were written about 1,000 years ago or 1,500 years ago. Uh, yeah, you? and there are other, um, you know, Hammurabi, and there's been, there's been different laws and moral guides and uh, things that have, you know, evolved over time. So the, it is a very big discussion. And... Um, I think we may have to leave it for another time just because it's, it's, um, I, you know, it's late as well. Yeah. I'll just say one last thing that, uh, do we really care if like monkeys cheat on their spouses? Right. Yeah. If we find that absurd, well, we are all in essence animals too. We just can't realize because we have been grown intoxicated with human exceptionalism. That's it. Yeah. Although, although the whole thing about not lying and cheating, it is again beneficial to society if people follow these, mm -hmm. you know, honest and the and you know, so the it with hum, human with human beings is there's another level past the level of like mm -hmm. even though chimps do have rudimentary mo morality, they care about fairness. If you pay one chimp less than the other, they'll get mad. If you give them both the same, they're fine. But if you give one of them a grape and the other one a, like a cucumber, the one that gets a, the cucumber will get mad because he wants a grape too. So there's definitely, you know, animals that go out of the way to, and and so, some a lot of it is biological, like you said, like the whole thing about um, the selfish gene and how we will jump in the water to save our child because that, that child is our DNA. And that's what, if we never evolved to save our children, we wouldn't exist to this day. And the, and the ones that mm -hmm. didn't care about the children, the DNA was cut off. Right. So the whole thing about adultery and and, you know, you know, mate guarding, there's a whole thing about humans doing mate guarding. They, they watch the partner. They want to make sure the partner is not going to cheat, because if it's a woman and the husband cheats, then he's going to take away all of his resources and go spend it on someone else's, some other children and another woman. And from the from the man, if he doesn't watch his wife or his partner and she cheats, he could be raising someone else's DNA. Right. And, and what's the big deal? The big deal is that if that was something that we weren't guarding for that would have evolved itself out so there's a lot of things that we think of as morality which are really just practically speaking something that we don't do because of of, of the the survival of the human race like incest 
incest is bad for humanity because it it causes birth defects and problems and you know Allah did it <laughs> Adam and Eve right yeah. this is like a huge topic and I'm just like throwing things out here but yeah um Aladdin thank you for the call you do send me an email and I, uh, me and Gondal neither of us speak Gondal and I neither of us speak Arabic so it's gonna have to be in English if you want to invite us to another channel uh, but thank you for the the invitation. Do send it whenever you're ready, and we'll we'll consider it. And uh, thanks for calling. And um, and to everyone else, thanks for joining us on the new channel. And um, hopefully the the main channel will be back in in action soon. Uh, for those of you who are joining here, really do appreciate it if you subscribe as well. And uh, Gondal, when are you going to start your channel? When is your channel coming? Um... I don't know. I have a few ideas working on a few things, but I did share some few ideas with you. We'll yeah. see if that works out. Um, so I have to do a few things. Um, but yeah, not sure. Maybe this end of this year, maybe Christmas, maybe next year. Who knows? You know, how things That'll are going. The Dawa world is uh, very up and down, unpredictable these days. <laughs> That'll be the best Christmas gift for the for us. Uh, uh, I'll follow oh, yeah, the band. <laughs> I, I, I just realized. I just realized this before we said bye. We're only yeah. on slide 33 out of oh, 101. So we're only one thirds the way through. And just to, just to, we'll do part two, maybe even part three, who knows? Uh, but we have to still go over flying carpets, black magic, uh, just to give you an idea. We have uh, suicides, we have newborn talking babies. Angels, the magic, the magic tricks, Satan tickling little babies, uh, crying trees, hugging Muhammad, uh, Satan pissing on people, red farting in the mosque. It's uh, chickens seeing angels, uh, people rubbing Muhammad's sweat on their face. So it's 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 quite a it's it's quite a what like it gets actually much much more we oh, actually gets really bizarre after slide 50 so do stay yeah. tuned for part number two because like imagine imagine solomon flying on a aladdin carpet that's <laughs> literally what happened so and, um uh, and uh, and the the muslim callers definitely add some masala some spice to the show and i really yeah. do appreciate the calls uh which is why i kept the call i let i let ray stay for like longer than usually we let people stay on the call because i think there was a good discussion going on there and it's when i started this thing it was tough to find people to talk to i don't know if you remember that nobody wants yeah. to come on nobody wants to come on the air and talk about these things it takes a lot of guts and a lot of people keep saying i'm not a scholar i'm not a scholar you don't have to be a scholar and we're not scholars either so we're just we're just throwing ideas and we're just having a conversation uh, just mm -hmm. like friends, you know, chatting, you know, you're chatting with your ex-Muslim friend at, at uh, I was going to say at the club, but Muslims are not supposed to go to clubs. Mm -hmm. At the at the beach, or nowadays we can't even go to the beach, but oh, what a world we live in. But yeah, you, this mm -hmm. is just like a virtual conversation you're having in a living room, just, you know, among friends, you know, we can be friends and we can have these conversations and it's great. You know, honestly, I truly appreciate that Muslim, like, you know, last time we had a Muslim caller, he was just angry and he was just looking to pick on you. And he's like, you. You 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 got it all wrong about Salafis and Deobandis and whatever. And I was like, what? Wait, what do we like? We're not, what was the? What are you po poking at? Like, what was the point of that? Like, that's not even a. We're not even talking about that. But today we got callers that were sincerely respectful, engaging with us. You know, um, trying to have a conversation, which is amazing. This is, this is the type of stuff that you know people grow with. You know what I mean? Like, and I and I I can bet you. I'm not saying for sure these guys, but there's going to be people people that call in. It's 2020, maybe in 2021, the same guy will call back or the same lady, and we'll be like, like this now. I'm not I'm not Muslim anymore. My situation's changed. I don't consider this to be this, the word of God. I'm sure we're gonna have people like that. So you know, whenever I get calls like that, I'm so happy. I'm like, this is what this is why we're doing this. We want people to talk to us. Where you know, like this is what we want. We don't. I mean, the yelling, it's dramatic and it's fun, but like, this is actually better. This is more productive. Like the way we today showed that the Muslim caller would be asked a question about a weird idea and their initial instinct is always, I'm not sure I believe in that. Yeah. So you can see initially that, yeah, rationally doesn't make sense. 
But as soon as that same absurd idea is put in the context and put the, uh, into a book in the seventh century, thousand year old, it suddenly becomes believable. Like it's just yep. subhanAllah, right? <laughs> yeah. And, and I remember, yep, go ahead. Sorry. And, and these Muslims, uh, Muslim viewers, when they'll see these other Muslims online talking to us and us asking him, do you believe in stones talking to a man? And then they're being like, mm, mm, yeah, I do. The impact that it has on the other viewers and how much of an eye opener that is for them, people don't realize, right? And that's why we're doing this. So hopefully this shows people, you know, maybe highlights the absurdity and shows that, okay, this is, we should stop rationalizing insanities. Uh, <laughs> uh, you form a community and perform a great service to humanity. Thank you, uh, J-A-Z. Uh, people need to know about this stuff. Uh, thank you, guys. Stay safe and stay <laughs> from COVID and the Dean. Hey, Gondol, can you up upload your slides? I was planning to upload the slides, but we didn't finish it yet. So I'm hesitant. Yeah. To just, I don't want to share it until we're done. I yeah, think... there's a hundred slides. So it's a lot more that's to go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. once, once we're done, once we're done. Um, yeah. Okay, we'll see. We'll, we'll upload at some point. At some point, we will upload the slides. Mm -hmm. Not right now. Yeah. So do you guys want to see us do the next time as in like all of it, cover the whole hundred slides? You want to split us a two parts, more calls, less slides? You can leave the comments, let us know, and uh, we will try to do our best. Oh, yeah. Great point. Yeah. Do leave do leave comments with your feedback on how you'd like to see the show. Um, do you like the calls or do you don't like the calls? Do you like us to go like rush through the slides? If, you know, whatever it is, just, just leave your comments and uh, any feedback you have, any... Uh, suggestions. Sometimes we have guests as well, right? We'll get a third person like Harris Sultan was on here once. That was really fun. Uh, maybe a positive profit. We should get positive profit on here for one of these. For the second stream. Actually, we should do the second part. Yeah. Maybe with him. That would be hilarious. Let's the... do that. <laughs> <laughs> Comedy circus night. <laughs> he, he said he wants, he, he, he's, a, he's a big profit and he wants $5,000 to show up. No, I'm just kidding. He said a lot. <laughs> we were having a stream. Me and we'll we'll like, use the we we'll lose the zakat money, don't worry. <laughs> the jizya, the jizya money. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, atheist profit, apostate profit, we have to take jizya, right? And you have to, like, hmm. we're going to have blasphemy laws. We're going to create our own uh, secular. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> none of that stuff, none of that stuff. Okay, all right. Uh, stay safe, everyone. Stay well. And uh, science half is.